Bouncing downfield, underthrown and intercepted. Keely Ringo has an escort down the sidelines. All the way to the end zone, and Georgia is going to conquer the Crimson Tide. feel free when we open up for questions to ask me the concern there is for complacency. That does not concern me in the least, because to be complacent, you have to have done something and achieved something. The men on this team for this season have not done that. They have not. We have 15 players that are now gone to NFL uh, camps or draft picks. They're gone. And we have some returning players, but they're hungry as ever. People have asked the question, how does it feel to be hunted? We will not be hunted at the University of Georgia. I can promise you that. The hunting that we do will be done from us going the other direction. Um, it's not something we're going to sit back and be passive about. Man who needs no introduction in this state, and he is ready for your questions. Dan Peck, ESPN 1067 in Auburn. Stetson, how seriously did you consider concluding your college football career after the national championship game or going to play college football somewhere else? And what were the most important factors in your decision uh, to come back to Georgia? You know, you play the game to play the game, uh, and you play the game to, to win and to compete against the best players. And if, if I, like, I'm able – I'm secure enough to, like, I can look in the mirror, like, I wasn't going to get drafted high last year, right? So what was the guarantee that I was going to go start in the NFL last year? It was probably pretty low, or this next year. It was probably pretty low. Um, and so this is the best football, this is the best conference in the country. You know, if we take care of business, you know, then we take care of business here. Um, you're competing against the best players. You got the best players on your team, best coaches. It's the smartest league. So... You know, and I mean, I love, I think it's the biggest honor in the world to be able to go out there with a G on the side of my helmet and my name on the back and look at my brothers across from me and know that we're playing for the University of Georgia and for the state of Georgia and for Bulldog fans around the country. So it really wasn't that tough of a decision. You know, I love football. I love everything, most everything about it. Um, and I just, I love to compete, and that was, you know, more of a guarantee to compete here. Kirby, there's obviously been a lot of talk this offseason about how many defensive players you, you lost. Um, from the defense you see today, where are those guys at in your mind, and how good can they be? Where are they right now? They're uh, inexperienced, uh, young, and hopefully talented as we think they are players. Um, at some positions, more talented than others. Uh, but they're in need of playing a game. And I guess you could say that's experience, right? So they're in need of experience. But more so than experience, they need to play in a game. They need good things to happen and reaffirm their good habits. And some of them need maybe something adverse to happen and see how they respond. Because I've never coached a defensive player that didn't give up a play or get beat. So how are they going to respond to that in a game atmosphere? Because it happens every day in practice. But how are they going to respond to that in a game atmosphere? I don't know if we know that yet. Uh, and that's going to be the resiliency factor of where is this group? 
because I don't think you really know until you go out in the game and have to execute it in front of the fans and against a, a really good uh, opponent. against the SEC is Oregon, Georgia. I like Georgia to win this game just because Oregon's not the first year uh, head coach, so I, got, I like Georgia to win this one. Uh, been to Athens, I like it, I'm going Georgia. Nice, I've nice. been to Athens and I like it, Georgia. By the, way, by the way, for those of you keeping score at home, when guys come on this show and they come up with this logic, you're, well, how many games do we pick? He's going to go undefeated. When you're, <laughs> no doubt. When you're like, I had a great time in Athens. I'm going. Those are the guys that yeah, end up yeah, winning. Yeah. So he, he exactly. winning. I'm going to keep that vibe going. I love it. It's a great town. I, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm like Eugene? in Atlanta. But uh, I like Eugene. In my, come on, eight, Eugene. in my eight years on the show, I was talking to a girl in Insert City. Here is undefeated. Undefeated. <laughs> Making the pick. Yeah. <laughs> Today inside Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, the Georgia Bulldogs begin their defense of their national championship, taking nothing for granted, but confident they're ready for another amazing season. You go take what belongs to you. Why don't we take advantage of this moment? And wherever you own, we own it. I don't think kids take it for granted, but you're going to win it every year. Coach Smart does a great job of just reloading. One more play for the Georgia defense. I got a sweet gig. I'm excited to see what we can do this year. Come on! For a touchdown! The Dogs' title defense begins against a talented Oregon team. The Ducks ranked number 11 in the preseason. Georgia is number three behind Alabama and Ohio State. Just the second meeting all time between the Ducks and the Dogs. It comes in the Chick-fil-A kickoff game on ABC. And it's the Dr. Pepper Championship Drive game of the week. Georgia returns quarterback Stetson Bennett, national champion winner, but starting a season opener for the first time. Yesterday, now 32 years old. Good start for Oregon. They move to the 40-yard line. Irving in trouble and dropped for a loss. Smile Munden. One of those who got some snaps of that deep defense last year. Is he so good after the catch? Now a swing pass. Here's McIntosh. And he has a first down. Both coaches talked about how sometimes conditioning is an issue in the opening game. They think they've done all they can to get their teams ready, but you really don't know until the season starts in earnest. McIntosh bounces off a hit. McIntosh inside the 35. He's taking over as the lead back after playing behind Zamir White and James Cook. Over the place. Only two runs so far. And nine pass attempts. First and goal from the nine. They flip it to Lad McConkey. Lad McConkey scores the first touchdown of the season for Georgia. Experience. And they didn't just hand him the job. He went into camp having to earn it, and he feels that was very important. Earn the respect and trust of his new teammates. Noah Whittington dumped for a loss. There is still some talent on this Georgia defense. That's one of the three returning starters, Chris Smith, the safety. Slight bobble of the snap, but Nick plenty of time throwing his first deep ball for seven. McGee, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the eight-yard line by Malachi Starks, a true freshman, with an interception in the first quarter of his first college game. Ball the 11, so a gain of three for McIntosh. After the fake in the flat, it is the enormous tight end. 
Darnell Washington powering his way out across the 35 to the 36. Three tight ends, and Fitzpatrick was part of them. Of course, I don't remember what I had for lunch, so it's not a surprise. Bennett throws wide open. Here's Powers. All the way to the Oregon 26-yard line. He had 56 catches last year. We knew he was an excellent all-around athlete. After the play fake, another wide open receiver. Lad McConkey diving for the end zone. He didn't quite get there. Poor tackling by Oregon here in this opening quarter. Try Quez Bridges, the latest whiff. And McConkey almost had his second touchdown of this quarter. They come quickly to the line of scrimmage. Bennett under center. He fakes to Milton and walks into the end zone. Georgia went 92 yards. Marie agrees it was a horse collar. A good drive for Oregon. They've moved the ball. They have seven first downs. Early in the second quarter, a terrible interception. Picked off and run back by Christopher Smith. And Todd, you talked about it, Bo Nix. The highs are very high, but he makes a lot of critical mistakes, and he's thrown two picks already. <laughs> what a wild game. Not a surprise it was competitive. North Carolina was a very narrow favorite in that game. Stetson Bennett all day to throw. Now here comes a hit and a flag thrown on the hit. Bennett hung in there long enough to drill one for a first down to A.D. Mitchell, and I think they're going to tack more. Length. The handoff to the motion man, McIntosh scores. Given that he got the Oregon head coaching job in December. Here comes pressure, Bennett. Still plenty of time to get it off. McIntosh inside the five. Jeffrey Bossa saved the touchdown. Two running backs, here comes McIntosh. Picking right up where they left off. Strange play fake, Bennett. Look out, here comes a posse of ducks. And it's a touchdown. Even when it looked like Bennett was in trouble, he got loose and McCocky scores again. Orlis and DJ Johnson to create a little bit more havoc in the face of Stetson Bennett. We talked about all the Georgia losses on defense, and Oregon suffered some big ones as well. Here's Lad McCocky. Kirby Smart. Now it is seventh season, 6-0 in season openers, and this one's in cruise control as Milton waltzes in. Taki Taimani whiffed on the tackle. The latest duck to do so. It's a 12-yard touchdown run. I think he will bring stability and uh, consistency there that they maybe haven't had for a while. McIntosh again, just another wide open receiver with all kinds of open space to run through. He wound up at the 13 yard line. This is the first Pac 12 opponent Georgia has played during the Kirby Smart era. And a back shoulder throw and a catch and a touchdown. A.D. Mitchell. Kendall Milton. Oregon might start those tackling drills on the flight on the way home. 18 yard touchdown for Milton. And those Duck fans who are here, and they have about 7,000 in attendance here, have had a long day. Trayvon Walker, who went number one in the NFL draft this past 
season. Of course, linebacker Nolan Smith made some comments back in August, basically warning us, saying that Mike Hill is basically a mini version of Trayvon Walker. He proved it last week. Obviously, many things that coaches want to see from both of these guys, but a pretty good problem for Kirby Smart to have, losing NFL talent, replacing them with freshmen who are ready to step up. And that doesn't even count all the other guys that this defense is returning, Taylor. We might need you to step up into the booth here. Oh, wait a minute, Mr. Stitch comes already back. Wow, how about the speed? Let's soak in a home football game at Sanford Stadium. This is from 27 yards. Actually, yep, make that 27. Straight ahead, it's 3 nothing. Georgia on top with 7.51 to go in the first quarter. The dogs are finally back home in Athens. To come clean. He got a shot on Hires. He had a big game last week as a first-year starter, and here come the dogs again. Hires somehow gets out of there, fumbles the ball, and George is on top of it. Hires trying to make something out of nothing, and Georgia player got his hand on it. Here, Dan Jackson was the one that forced the fumble, and Xavier Sori is the one that recovered it. Two field goal tries so far in the red zone this week, and Pod Lesney cashes in on both of them. Six nothing Georgia. Wilton again next to Bennett. It's Stetson himself. Touchdown Georgia. And four for the dogs on the doorstep. Fake the Dejan over the top. Touchdown, Dylan Bell. In the history of Georgia football, passing Rodrigo Blankenship. Right through there. 23 nothing dogs on top with 5.01 to go until halftime. And today. And on third and six, he's got all day, and this one's a good one to Kiaris. Inside the 25 with Cortland Marsh all over Jackson. He's in the offense. Jones on the left, Mims on the right. Bennett across the middle, wide open to his big tight end target. Down to the one goes Bowers. 27 more for the man that was the best freshman in America last year. McIntosh behind Bennett. And Kenny walks in. always in the elements down there. Let's see if Hires, nope, nowhere close. Nolan Smith and friends came in there to prevent the first down. George is going to call their last time out. Second and five. Beck swings it to the other side to Bell who had that touchdown earlier and he sets up a first and goal. He said, we play with more of an edge. There's no doubt. You know, they haven't folded. You get down the red zone, and they've found a way to stiffen multiple times this afternoon. Podlesny with his fourth you know, make of the day. 33-0 George as they get ready for the Gamecocks next week. Edge player, outside linebacker. You look at those players, that's exactly how they play. Second and 15, no chance there. Is it's Michael Williams, freshman from Columbus, in the backfield against the Ducks last week. Same story in week two. Let's see what Chris Hatcher wants to do. And how about that big hit by big number 95 for the dog, Sean Washington, getting some playing time and making the most of it. Still playing, both sides. You see? Game come to a close. 12-minute fourth quarter. 
sportsmanship there. A lot would gain on both sides. And Tennessee Tech waiting on Sanford on the other side of this one. So four shutout in the last 14 games for UGA. Chris Hatcher was the first guy stench to give Kirby Smart a chance at coaching. And you can see the level of respect those two have for each other. You got South Carolina next week. Uh, what are some of the initial outlook on that matchup and what they bring to the table, especially with the new quarterback mindset? Well, I've got tremendous athletes, quarterback. We looked hard at uh, both him and, and their offense in the offseason, have studied those guys. They got a tremendous team and they got a tremendous atmosphere. And those kids really believe and buy into uh, uh, Shane and their staff. Uh, and they'll be a, a tough opponent. They've gone out and played, you know, on the road in the SEC already. And now we got to go play on the road in the SEC. And we really haven't played that kind of road game yet to, to see what our team's really all about. Molly chronicled it. Great atmosphere here. Interesting to me, Todd, that yeah. Shane Beamer, who had the choice, selected to put his offense on the field first against this Georgia D that hasn't given up a touchdown. Well, Spencer Rattler told us yesterday they want to attack this defense. Good luck. Jack Podlesny kicks off. It'll be a touchback. They have quieted this raucous crowd very quickly. The reverse. Brock Bowers turns the corner and scores. Another great call by Todd Munkin and beautifully executed by the Dogs. A five-yard touchdown run for the sophomore Brock Bowers. Well, his rhythm throwing the football down the field. Juju McDowell, the running back now. They fake a draw to him. They're trying to throw a wheel route and it's picked off along the far sideline. The freshman Starks, who had one in the opener against Oregon, he has done it again. Bennett pulls it down and takes off. Stetson Bennett inside the five, lunging for the pylon. No signal yet, now there is. Touchdown, Georgia. Along. Maybe they're just trying to figure out where the ball should go. After Perhaps review, at the one, even though the, the runner stepped the out of bounds with the ball just past the two-yard line. It'll be first down for Georgia. Jason Autry is the referee. He looks familiar to our group. He yeah. worked the game we did last week. The interception really hurt on their last possession. Kendall Milton, the running back, lowers his head, and that's a touchdown. Georgia, two possessions and two touchdowns. Not going to win with field goals. No. And nothing there for Christian Beal Smith. Smile Munden. Another new starter, sophomore from Dallas. And pressure brought by Georgia. Rattler has his man, but short of the first down. Jalen Brooks ridden across the far sideline, well short. Keely Ringo. Made the tackle. A 50 pound target in the red zone. They go to the other tight end. Brock Bowers. Wow. Touchdown. With fortune there. But Bowers is just too good. And 
Stetson Bennett. Shake it up while throwing the six yard touchdown pass to Bowers who has run for one and now caught one. Uh, actually got sick after that scoring play and came over to the sideline and yelled in frustration with his head down. He's been taking oxygen all game from their very first drive and athletic training staff was pouring water and cool towels on his neck, but I'm told he's fine and will return in this game, Sean. In pressure. And they don't, and they stuff the run. Marshawn Lloyd driven all the way back inside the 30-yard line. Ingram Dawkins there again. Redshirt freshman from here in South Carolina from Gaffney. After the fake toss, Bennett got it off to wow. Bowers wow. for a first down. What a play by Stetson Bennett. I mean, he sells the fake, so he's late getting his head and eyes around after the bootleg fake. Watch how long it takes him. Sells the fake. Now when he gets it, there's somebody right there. And he has to instinctively get rid of the ball. And he throws it to the right guy. Brock Bowers, excellent hands, wow. reaches back behind him with one hand. Pick up David Spalding also out. So DQ Smith, the starter today, he was a quarterback in high school, very talented athlete. Good position on that coverage. Jack Podlesny, excellent kicker from 42 yards. And it is good. He's five out of six this season, and his only miss was a 54-yarder. 36 is in there at one of the safety spots, so a depleted defense loses another right now, and right to the work is Stetson Bennett. Brock Bowers after the play fake, showing his great athleticism. He's going to take it all the way for his third touchdown of the game. 78 yards. Todd Munkin said, no mercy. New guy in, we're going after him. And Marshawn Lloyd blasted by Nolan Smith. That replay reminded me of one of my favorite, maybe my favorite college football announcing duel of all time. Keeps it off for a short game. Very comfortable. Dejan Edwards breaks free from a poor tackle and finally gets swung down by the true freshman Eamon Worry, but it's a first down for George out at the 47-yard line, a gain of 17. Not, he went 11-1 and one last season. The only loss was to Alabama in the SEC title game. There's another man running wide open. Kendall Milton tripped up, or that might have been a touchdown. It's Kawan Banks, another freshman, true freshman, into the secondary for Carolina. They have even more injuries out there today. With an MVP performance in the title game, national championship game against the Tide. Now he shows his running skills and weaves into the end zone. Not sure I'd want the quarterback running with a 31 to nothing lead, but it all works. This is an 11 yard touchdown run. I was gonna finish by saying they went eight and zero in the SEC with Bennett last year. The early part of this college football day. You know, Cincinnati, Miami of Ohio. I mean, you would think Cincinnati the upper hand, but that's a heck of a rivalry game. Rattler double coverage. Somebody has the ball. Georgia has it. Dan Jackson with the interception it was intended for Jaheim Bell. Well, this is a play where you're giving one of your best players a chance to make a play on the football. Jaheim Bell at the top of the heap here for the last four or five years. Play action pass by Beck. Has a man wide open, and it's a touchdown. Oscar Delp, true freshman with his first catch. One of the top high school recruits in the country. Out of coming Georgia. Violated here by Georgia. It might be the most lopsided final score in series history if it stays this way. Carson Beck showing he can run as well. And he gallops out near the 40-yard line. O'Donnell Fortune made the tackle. Give Jared Zirkel, the backup kicker, a shot at it. Redshirt sophomore, Kerrville, Texas. 21-yard try. And is there anything that doesn't work for the Georgia Bulldogs these days? 48-0. Just under nine minutes to go here at rapidly emptying williams Price Stadium. Thinking 13 points a game is our mark. That's Glenn Schumann there, 32 years old, Alabama grad. 
Both his parents were coaches. His dad was a football coach when he was growing up. Doty fires over the middle and it's intercepted. Tresman Marshall after Ryan Davis put the heat on Luke Doty. Though they still have not given up a touchdown this season. Zero and 15. It's amazing too with as many men as they play and how many they run on and off. How they manage it without substitution infractions. Doty given a clean pocket has a man open and it is caught in the corner of the end zone. Trayvon Kenyon with the first touchdown scored against Georgia this season. It comes with 53 seconds left in their third game of the year. Daniel Dan David Daniel Sisivan is the one I got caught up in the coverage on that one. He got mixed up. Uh, we've not seen any receivers for South Carolina running wide open until that play. Hey, what about your game plan for obviously Spencer Rattle was a guy who can really spin it, throw it deep, and all that kind of stuff. And he did. How would you feel like you guys uh, obviously responded to defending him? Well, the shots they took, you know, there's some plays they made uh, down the field. We got we got to get better at that. We got to be able to play out on the perimeter. I thought that uh, Keely had a couple plays. You know, they went one on one with him. He's he's got to be able to make those. But if you disrupt the quarterback's rhythm and you don't allow people to run the ball, which you know so far we, we've been hard to run the ball on, um, it, it makes people one dimensional. You know, and, and we have to continue to do that. We're not you know, we weren't completely healthy today. We had three or four guys beat up, banged up, a couple guys didn't practice during the week and tried to go in the game, but we got to get back full strength so we can be at our best. All right, see y'all guys. <laughs> <laughs> I got to go. Okay, pipe up. Coach, obviously, you know, you're in the position you're right now. People want to say all kind of nice, wonderful things about the program. You speak a lot about, you know, avoiding the noise. But when you got the opposing coach saying it's the greatest uh, collection of talent in the history of college football, I mean, what, what does that have? Kind of hey, you was probably watching last year's tape if he's saying that. <laughs> I mean, there was a lot of really good players on that team last year. This team's, uh, you know, we're, we're young. We got a lot of mistakes and a lot of things to clean up. So I get it. If I was him, I'd be saying the same thing. But uh, I know different. This is Athens, Georgia, where the number one ranked Bulldogs are back home in Sanford Stadium to take on the Kent State Golden Flashes of the Mid-American Conference. SEC Network football is live on the air between the hedges. Well, Stetson Bennett is doing something new this year. It all started after that national championship game. When he was watching it back, he was thinking, oh, I could have done that. I could have done this. So his fix for that was to start mapping out the field and realizing where he can take risks, when he can really push it, and when he needs to be a little bit more patient. Clearly, that is paying off for him so far this season. He's a Heisman contender so far, Tara. Yeah. He is the Walter Camp National Player of the Week in Week 1 and has played terrific football through the first three games of the season, completing 73% of his passes so far on the year. And he's going to throw one here on the first play. He wants to go deep to McConkey, trying for separation, and he can't make the grab. Good coverage by Montre Miller for Kent State. So it's second down and 10 for Stetson, who at least at the beginning of this play lines up under center with Kenny McIntosh behind him, and it's Bowers, just like Stitch talked about in the open. Just get him the football. There he goes. 75 yards. The late, great Larry Munson once said, my God, a freshman. How about, my God, a tight end? 75 yards on a sweep for a touchdown. Kent State treats third down like a second down. It's nothing for them to run right here. And that's what they fake. And Schley keeps it himself. And he is tackled at the 35 by Dumas Johnson again. It's a good thing he didn't hand that football off because Nolan Smith de Cooper. Fourth down. 
on one of the better defensive units in the country. Josh Smith will punt for Kent State. Lad McConkey stands at his own 25-yard line. It's a terrific punt by Smith. McConkey drifts back to his 16, and he muffed it. And Kent State dives on it at the 26-yard line. Didn't look like McConkey ever really got that football. It clipped his leg. Bryce Shepard may have distracted him as he's the one running in front of him here. He just drops it. And this is trickier than it appears. We talk about this is not necessarily a pass down. Schley wants to pass, but he'll never get a chance. Nolan Smith has been uncovered so far. The Dogs had one sack on the season coming in. They have two on the first two possessions. Didn't run the football right there. Andrew Glass is long on the season, is 42 yards. This is from 45, and that is right down Broad Street here in Athens. And Kent State is on the board. In fact, that's the first team that scored against Georgia in the first quarter of this season. And Bennett down the field. This is underthrown, and it's picked off at the five-yard line. That is Montre Miller, who wins the one-on-one -on -one ball. Georgia had no turnovers in the first three games of the season. They have two in the first quarter. On passing plays, they do it on punts, too. Watch out. It's blocked. And it goes back out of the end zone. Jalen Walker blocked it. This would be a safety. There is a flag down. The penalty is against Kent State. Holding, holding, kicking team. Kicking team. That penalty is the crime. Result of the play is the safety. Time to celebrate. Bennett facing pressure, and McConkey heard the footsteps. Yep. CJ West had the hit on the quarterback, standing next to Bennett. Stets in the pockets, collapsing. He waited too long, and CJ West sacks him outside the 25 yard line. That just inside 40 yards, it'll be a 39 yard attempt from Podlesny, and that is right down the heart. Jo Georgia now leads 12 to 3. More difficult from a catch radius standpoint. McConkey looking for a block, and he fumbles the football, and it's Kent State's ball. Marvin Pierre came in there and forced the fumble. And Georgia has committed their third turnover of the first half. And is. The numbers bear it out. Schley slings it out to the sideline. And this streaking down the sideline is Walker who's free. And this is a touchdown for Kent State. Devontes Walker makes the catch near the line of scrimmage. It is a 56-yard touchdown. Hawks have turned it over three times in the first half. Two turnovers by Ladd McConkey, an interception by Stetson Bennett. He'll go deep again. He's got McConkey, and he can't get it. Just outside his fingertips. Georgia has repeatedly tried to stretch the field today twice to Ladd McConkey and with similar results. Both catchable balls, neither of which resulted in a completion. A big conversion to Darnell Washington on that previous throw. Big O is just a behemoth in that uniform. Kendall Milton finds a soft spot. He's inside the 20. Nico Bolton with the tackle that might have saved a touchdown. Bounds, but unbelievable effort. Bowers already has one rushing touchdown, make it two. 
This guy is a weapon in every single way. A rushing touchdown last week, two more today. But here's Sanford Stadium, third and six. Cooper gets inside the 30, but Bear Alexander was waiting for him. Those in this game. And now he's made another. We have a one score game with 3.39 to go in the first half. Bennett's found nine different receivers today. It's the 10th play of the drive. Bowers, another terrific catch, just short of the end zone. It does, and now Bennett will take off, and there's a flag down as he dives for the end zone, short with eight seconds left. They call this a touchdown. They give Bennett the end zone. Defense. So that means Bennett's arm did get to the goal line. The last couple of plays, totally out of sorts. Let's see if Stench, if he got in. All you have to do is get it across that white line. And with that judge looking straight down the line, he had the best view of it. Had a very similar cut last week. To PR, not surprised a flag did not come out. It's a 20 yard completion. Dejon Edwards goes to the ground with a burst of speed, breaking tackles. And he's downed inside the 20 yard line. Targeted number one, ended up being an interception, going the other direction. Well, Jackpot Lesney once again. We'll come onto the field. This is a 32 yard attempt. And he makes the score 29 to 13 with 10 41 to go in the third quarter. Georgia's lead was six, now it's 16. Schley keeps it himself. Thought about throwing, and he's tackled out of bounds by Javon Bullard. Tresman Marshall also there. 22 yards for Andrew Glass, who's made a couple 45-yarders. And it's right through there again. New score, 29-16, Georgia. And back in front of Hot Rod, and it's good. From 32 yards out. 32, 82.6% to Rodrigo's 82.5. Else that are the interior defensive linemen. On this third and three. And it's Schley keeping it himself. And he gets right near the chain. Might be half a yard shy. A smile Munden delivered another lick. Against, against the number one team of the country. Should give you all kinds of confidence. But this is a fake. And it's converted the second straight week. Georgia's given up a first down on a fake punt. Zayn West makes the catch. First down, Kent State. Cooper gets in. Touchdown, Kent State. Golden Flash's stench have been running right at Georgia all day. 25 plays in their last two drives and scored 10 points. Schley takes it out of Cooper's belly and he misses Leach. The score remains 32-22. Georgia with over 12 minutes left. Makes him a bigger back. Bowers stays on the field, but he's got a little hitch in his giddy up. Edwards doesn't. It's a first down run down to the 32. Arm reach across that pylon, but here's Bennett at the one. Turns to Milton. Milton extra effort. Looks like he's in. Yes.
year had that 50-50 ball for an interception last week. In the Gamecocks victory, Schley has all kinds of time. He's thrown into double coverage, though, and this is just like a punt. Christopher Smith intercepts it and runs to his Georgia bench. Good to see one of the more popular players on the team get to put the golden pads on. We also had played the entire game without punting the ball once and uh, really had four turnovers uh, when you consider the, the fake punt included on that. So you're not going to grow up and mature. This was a growth week for us. We really talked about growth the entire week. I was very pleased with how our guys approached uh, the practice and the games and the leadership. Uh, I was really proud of how we came out in the second half and got a three and out, and then the offense had a great drive all the way down, we just didn't cash it in for a touchdown. So we had some costly penalties and turnovers that hurt us, uh, but our team got better today. And that was the key for me to say, did our team get better today? And I can honestly say we played a good opponent and we got better. Palpable inside for Oldfield. This is SEC Saturday night presented by T-Mobile. And we've got the entire field covered for you tonight. Number one, George is in town to take on these Missouri Tigers. And we're going to take you somewhere you've never been before. In moments, Cole Kublik will be with Kirby Smart. But right now, behind that door, inside the Missouri locker room, Jordan Rogers is in the scrum with this Missouri team looking for the upset of the day in college football. Just help him. I tell you what, I was in there when Eli gave his speech. There was focused faces. There was optimism. There was excitement. This team is ready to take on Georgia here. Dogs will try to run it. Missouri is right there. That's Christian Williams. Cole, you think if Missouri has any advantage tonight, it's going to be their bigs on the defensive line. He's on the right side of the line of scrimmage, attached at tight end right now. Let's see if they move him to try to set up a matchup for this third down, and they do. Made eye contact with Bennett before the shift. Third down, 14 for Georgia. Pressure coming up the middle. Bennett, pressure, sidesteps it. Gets one man in the air and goes down in Missouri with a big stop on Georgia's first possession. Best defense in the country last year. Cook pressure. Escapes. And had to work just to get past the line of scrimmage. And so second possession for Georgia begins at about the Missouri 10. And they'll run it in a huge hole for Kendall Milton. And a change of direction, but he lost the football. Tigers fall on, on the logo. Was he down or not? Looks like Missouri made its first break. Tyron Hopper forced it out. Rakestraw found it. Games like this. And so Cook under center now. A little misdirection, a lot of window dressing. He's pressured and goes down. The Georgia defense answers with a big play of its own. Kamari Lassiter. For guys, made five starts in his career. Spin move, and that is rejected at the line of scrimmage. It's Isaiah McGuire out of Tulsa Union with another big stop. Water Burden, the third out of East St. Louis. Cook, good coverage by Georgia. Going downfield again, and that's caught for a first down. Dominic, love it. Another flyer from the east side, a gain of 27. Third down 13, pressure coming. Cook over the middle. Nice crossing route, Luther Burden. Under the 24. Fourth down, Missouri's kicking game. Typically reliable. Mevis with a knuckleball and he punches it through. He's back on track, one of the prettiest, but it went through. And speaking of not being pretty, I know it's not anything Jordan can relate to.
But last week's game on the Plains, ugly on both sides. Late. Bugs faked the blitz. Cook trying to direct traffic on the run. Dangerous proposition. He got a man open. And a first down for Dominic Lovett. Scramble drill is paying off for the Tigers tonight. Georgia has had up front that they've been able to develop. And he creates problems for offensive lines. Tigers have converted both of their third downs in this drive. Five-man rush. Cook to the outside. Wide open. Touchdown, Tigers. Tyler Stevens. Complete, and they do this time with Roseby Jackson, a pickup of 17. Intricacy of the, of the position. On third and two. Ball on the ground, Missouri finds it. Another Georgia mistake, and the Tigers scoop it up. It's Dale and Carnell. Well within the range of Harrison Mevis. And he drills this one. What a bounce back game for the Missouri kicker. Play clock at one. Tigers trying to bring pressure. And a fantastic grab for a Georgia first down by Dominic Blaylock, a gain of 18. Bennett keeps it, unloads. Here's the best tight end in the country, Brock Bowers. Tried the out to the sideline, great coverage. Great job dialing up pressure by Mizzou. Jack Podlesny from 40. Crushed it. Dogs finally on the board with 6.36 to go in the first half. Missouri looking for the upset of the year in college football up by 10. I'm up those deep routes and last few games you've really seen him and Lovett who's not on the field tonight. Or at least the last couple drives. And they'll go straight ahead with Cody Schrader. And Cody Schrader leading the Cowboy. Finally taken down at the one. 63-yard rumble for the senior from St. Louis by way of Division II Truman State. Feels a lot different than 13 or 16, depending on this kick right here. 22-yard attempt from Mevis. Back to his old self. He is a perfect 3-for-3 three three tonight. A blitz. Get man coverage here. Only bring four. Bennett has to run. And on the run, converts for a first down. That's Dylan Bell's first catch of the game. Lane Walker is snapper. And they're going to fake it. Bennett, the holder, will take off. And Georgia picks up the first down. There's a huge benefit to having your quarterback be the holder. Missouri will get the ball to start the third quarter. Kick is true. The last time Georgia came back from a double digit halftime deficit was the Rose Bowl against Oklahoma in 2018. That thriller. Complete to the edge, and that's good for the first down. McConkey comes up big again. 14 yard pickup. And that was the pressure that Stetson felt. And now McIntosh on the swing. And he's got another Georgia first down. Pick up a 10. Quickly to the wide receiver McConkey, And he takes it for a first down. McIntosh. Blasted at the line of scrimmage. Carlys came in to fill the hole.
Bennett pressured. Can't escape, and he goes down. A sack for Darius Robinson. Guard attempt now for Podlesny. Hit a 33-yarder to close the half. Bad snap, good hold. And a great recovery by Stetson Bennett as a holder. Missouri with two sacks of Stetson Bennett tonight. Seven tackles behind the line, and that caps a 16-play, 66-yard, 7-minute, 47-second drive for Georgia. Defense off the football, so... You might can have success with that, but trust me, Missouri can make an adjustment and try to slow it down. Love it with a good sprint on that bad ankle in motion. Cook going deep. It is caught for Missouri first down. Mookie Cooper, a gain of 45. With that talent tonight. Daniel Pete. Thrown down for a loss on a big play by Warren Brinson. Settle for a long field goal here. 52-yard attempt from Harrison Mevis. Matches season long. Missouri trying to answer the Georgia three. And Mevis boots it through. After a heartbreaking miss. On a chip shot against Auburn at the end of regulation, Harrison Mevis is four for four tonight with three kicks longer than 40. He individually, and that carries its way into the offense. He wants more control over protection adjustments from Todd Munkin, and now it's his time to prove. And they'll go to the run game here with Kendall Milton, and he picks up a first down, but we've got a flag. Cole, you talked to Stetson this week, and it seems like he thinks that coming into this game, the offense was running on all cylinders. Yeah, I asked him about the offense, the evolution of it, and I thought he was in a little bit more command of it this season. Columbia's Martez Mandel, and it takes Georgia past midfield. Bennett down the sideline, flag on the play, caught by Darnell Washington, and he tried to go high, and he went Ralph Macchio on the kick. It's a pickup of 30. And that is 6 7, 270 rumbling down the tracks. Semi finalists for the Campbell Trophy, the academic Heisman. Our buddy Matt Stinchcomb won that back in 99. 28 yard attempt. And it is true. Kickers have earned their scollies in their NIL money tonight, huh? To the ground game. Here's Pete. He's got a first down. And he takes it into Georgia territory, carrying four Bulldogs with him. What a run by Nathaniel Pete. Never leave the table on a heater. Officially a 55 yard attempt. Drives it. Got the distance. It's a heater, baby. A game of redemption for Harrison Mevis, who left the Missouri bench stunned with his chip shot miss against Auburn. He might come again. There he is. Meanwhile, they run it right past him. Kenny McIntosh in the open field. Swerves his way into Mizzou territory on a 27-yard run. Under Kirby when trailing. After three quarters. Bennett down the field. Darnell Washington got the ball and he delivered the hit. Man, he sent Charleston back five yards. Fourth this season. Bennett hands it off. They go with the sweep. Here's McIntosh. Hit. First down to the pylon. And he's out of bounds at the one yard line. What a battle. And now first and goal coming for number one, Georgia the line. Bennett will hand it off. Touchdown Georgia. A plunge for Kendall Milton. Had just enough space. And dogs an extra point away from a three-point game. It can get deep. That snap tends to get a little bit high. Tigers will run it. And a huge hole for Schrader again. This guy was overlooked by everybody coming out of high school in St. Louis at Lutheran South. Cook finds Cooper. 
The Tigers will be forced to punt here about midway through the fourth quarter, clinging to a three-point lead. Credit's number one for flying around all night and taking hits. Again to the ground game. That's a first down run and more. Kenny McIntosh finally gets corralled at the 40. Four-man rush. Bennett has time. Caught at the 11-yard line. And a first down. It's Dominic Blaylock. And Mookie did some damage across the street at Hearn Center back in his day playing for Billy Tubbs in Oklahoma. Tug in the jersey, but this area of the field is usually where Brock Bowers is a huge threat and a mismatch matched up right now on a corner. And there he is. Catch made, and he is down to the goal line. Just short. And the Dogs will have first and goal after that 12-yard gain. Number one looking for its first lead of the night. Edwards. In. Touchdown, Georgia. And number one finally has the lead. Got Cooper and Burden on the near side. Looking that way, adjusts over the middle, incomplete. Trying to find Bannister, covered by Tyke Smith, who's taken over the star position for Javon Bullard, who did not make the trip for Georgia. Rush to the ball again. Movement by Missouri, they hand up on the sweep. This is Edwards, and he's got the first down! And Georgia's gonna escape mid-Missouri with a win. Victory indeed for Kirby Smart. Two things we talk about in this program all the time is composure and resiliency, and uh, we, we, we had to OD on those tonight because uh, we certainly um, didn't start very well, didn't start in very good field position, but look, I couldn't be prouder of our guys. At halftime, nobody blinked, nobody questioned. It was the most together I've ever seen our team, and uh, the theme this entire week was do it for your brother and do it for each other, and I thought they hung tight and did that. Now, that said, there's a ton of things to clean up, and a lot to get better, and I would be remiss if I didn't give Eli, his team, uh, the Missouri Tigers, the atmosphere they had tonight, uh, uh, some kudos too. They played really physical, really hard, and uh, whipped our butt up front. Uh, but I'm proud of the way our guys played, and when we had to run it, about the only time we could run it when we had to. in Georgia. The Deep South's oldest robbery continues. Last week, the Bulldogs escaped Missouri with a dramatic win, but lost their top national ranking. Touchdown, finally! Hey, we in the fourth! A slight setback for the returning national champs. Georgia down to number two. Today, they face a desperate Tiger team. But familiarity breeds contempt. A rejuvenated dog team takes their vengeance on Auburn in their 127th meeting. It's go dogs. It's War Eagle, the Deep South's oldest rivalry. When your back is against the wall, you show no fear at all. It's revival versus survival. Auburn versus Georgia. Next. Stetson Bennett loves this rivalry. He's talked about it all week long. He's trying to get his team focused on playing Georgia football. Auburn will get the football first. The Deep South's oldest rivalry is underway, and Auburn will get the ball to start things off. Get the first down. It is a first down up to the 35-yard line. He gets it to Bigsby again. Bigsby is met behind the line of scrimmage and snuffed out almost immediately. Ball out of the backfield. He was great in that final drive yep. against Missouri. And they give it to him. He's got the first down and more. Inside Auburn territory, lowers his shoulder and gets to the 35, and the pile is moved down to the 30-yard line. You hear this crowd? You see that offensive line go down and finish the job? But Lesney, he has not missed inside 50 yards this year. This will be a 47-yard field goal attempt. Good snap, good hole. Kick is on its way. End over end. Does it have enough? And it is no good. To the left, he hooked it. With 2.18 to play here in the first quarter. Is it still kind of like training camp? 
with Ashford. Yeah, remember and he said, yes. spring ball, it was Zach Calzada and TJ Finley getting the runs. Right. This young guy's just trying to run on the run. Oh, we got a fake well, punt. And they stopped him. It was Samuel Schenker who took the direct snap, and he didn't get enough. Georgia was there prepared. It was Leitze who made the tackle, and that is a gutsy call. 99th in the last four games in the red zone. McConkey's in motion. They hand the ball off. Edwards. He bounces to the outside, and Edwards gets down close to the 10 yard line. Oh, he's still on his feet. He gets to the five. He keeps his feet moving. More yards for the Bulldogs. Nothing gets this crowd juiced than the, the infantry arrive. Oh, look for 19 right over here to be the guy. Yeah, he's in motion now in the backfield. They may hand it off to him. Nope, they pitch it. Running to his left and to the goal line. Kenny McIntosh into the end zone. Touchdown, Georgia. Beautiful scheme here. Escape away from the half field. You're left with nothing. Oh, now fourth down and they'll punt yet again. Chapman will punt it to McConkey. Uh, McConkey is going to try to return this one. He makes one man miss. He's got some daylight and he's going to spin his way inside Auburn territory, sidewinding his way inside the 35. This is a great return. The edge defender of the punt coverage unit ends up missing. McConkey makes it miss the tackle. And once he gets around the edge, they build the wall for him. Is in the backfield for Georgia. Quick strike time. Look for a chunk to opportunity. That's McConkey in motion. They give it to Robinson. Running to his left. Robinson inside the 20 along the sidelines. Lowers his shoulder. And it gets down inside the 10. Pocket knocked him out of bounds. How about the running game for Georgia in this second quarter? Opportunity just to assert your will. There's the sugar huddle. Yep. Bowers in motion. Lines up as the offset fullback. They give it to Edwards, and Edwards into the end zone. Second straight score for the Bulldogs, up 13-0. Switch total yards today, 88. Tight ends to the field, wide receivers to the boundary. Ashford, pressure's coming. He breaks loose, he fumbled the football. It's recovered by Georgia. He was loose with the ball last year, last week. He had four fumbles. He lost one. Lowe comes out of the pile with the football. They need to get to the 24 for first down. Their average yard to gain on third down is nine. He fumbles the snap. And Auburn's able to fall on top of it. Zierer was able to track it down and get it out of bounds. It's not an urgent matter. Just clean up. And Ashford. Set up in the pocket. It's tipped at the line of scrimmage. Incomplete, and that will be it. Bear Alexander got his hand on it. That's appropriate. He got his paw up there and knocked it away. Sovereign defense. They were fantastic in the first half. Georgia only one of six. Big down right here. Hmm. Yeah, third down at seven. Bennett drops back to pass. Sets up in the pocket. It's collapsing. And he's wrapped up and taken down. He lost the football. Auburn recovers. Out of the pile comes Colby Wooden. He was in the backfield from the get-go. You talk about a big play. An opportunity to get your own short field. Down at five. It's getting louder here at Sanford Stadium. Ashford, pressure's coming, trying to get away, trying to run away, and he runs out of bounds to the 13-yard line, and he gets stopped by the hedges. He's shy of the first down. Good snap, good hole, kick is on its way, and it is good. So Auburn is on the board. They cash in on the turnover by the Bulldogs. Bet it takes the low snap. And he throws to the near side. There's a flag. He has it, and he's out of bounds at the 40-yard line. And let's wait and see who the penalty is against. Offsides on defense. Pull away, which is the telltale sign for the official. Edwards to the end zone, and he's in, walking in. What a great answer drive by the dogs. A pistol formation, and they'll just hand it off. And Bigsby's nothing there. Nolan Smith, the senior, was in the backfield before the ball was even handed off.
team's importance. This team has first and ten from the 36-yard line. Bennett. Keep it himself. Runs it right up the middle. Bennett inside Auburn territory. Bennett inside 25. He may be able to go inside the five. Touchdown, Georgia. Oh, my. Rags to riches indeed. Touchdown, the seventh most in program history. 64 yards for Stetson Bennett. Bennett steps up, throws, and it's complete. Bowers. And Bowers steps forward. J.D. Ryan was in on the coverage. They'll move an offensive lineman in motion. Bennett hands the ball off to Edwards. Edwards to his right. Edwards toward the goal line. And Edwards is in. Touchdown, Georgia. It's 34 to 3. When we talk about tight ends at Georgia, we're talking about unicorns. Well, now they put in a guy, end up playing tight end that is enormous. Pass is uh, complete to Hunter out of the backfield, and Hunter has a first down. Breaks a tackle in two into the open field inside the 20, the 10, the 5, touchdown, Auburn. What I love about college football is there is no quit. Today's game, Auburn with 10 penalties. <laughs> Bennett has dealt wide open. He's got a first down, so he got the yards back. What's the term? An embarrassment of riches? Big time riches. Four for four today. You know, they were seven for seven against Oregon, but other than that, they All of those been great. really pounding the ball, too. Yeah. They shovel it off to Robinson, and Robinson along the sidelines powers his way to the goal line. He's in. Touchdown, Georgia. More mall ball. Fifth. It's the freshman Robinson in the backfield. Carson back the quarterback. They hand it off to Robinson. He runs to his right. He's got the first down and more. He's inside Auburn territory. He's inside the 40-yard line. He's inside the 30-yard line before he's eventually taken out of bounds. Inside the Auburn 30. In a building phase. Let this guy finish his job. If you make the decision at season's end, so be it. Yeah. But otherwise, hang in there. Well, Georgia has won its sixth consecutive portion of the Deep South's oldest robbery. Play on the, as far as the point, point of attack play goes for your defensive line is concerned. How do you think those guys did this past week, especially some of the younger players? Some good, some bad. And guess what? It's the exact same as every game. <laughs> so, so you, you, you want to go everything, measure everything by stats, but there's, there's times we got cut out of our gap. There's times we got knocked off the ball. There's times we got bumped. Um, Times we got beat, you know, in the secondary, and times we did it right, uh, you know, probably didn't have exactly the quarterback and the receivers to expose that. Uh, sometimes when we didn't do it right, but um, I'm proud of the development those guys have had. They keep getting better, um, and we we've got to we got to get more guys on defense that can play winning football, and that's going to be the key down the stretch as we play these games coming up. Luton Bandy, you got to have more guys that can play with stamina. Um, the more snaps you have to play. Welcome to the 100th homecoming game in Athens. We appreciate you, PB. This is Sanford Stadium on a beautiful, sun-drenched Saturday afternoon. It's number one Georgia against Vanderbilt. It's SEC Network Football, presented by Allstate. What a beautiful scene in Sanford Stadium for the dogs and the doors. Let's come inside the press box here on this beautiful homecoming Saturday. Andy did win the toss, but deferred Georgia is set to receive. Kiaris Jackson watches it run past him. And Stetson Bennett and the dog offense comes out to the field stench where they have struggled in the first quarter the last three weeks. Where does Stetson look to move the chains? Surveys the field's got time and he's got wide open Rosamie Jack Saint who's down near the 30 yard line first down Georgia. The 11. 
It's McIntosh going to the top of your screen. That's where Bennett will throw it. McIntosh makes a move. Touchdown, Georgia. Run element to quarterback. And it's Davis again. Can't get the edge. Look at that closing speed by Christopher Smith. The initial option, but he certainly emerged on a couple of passing plays. Second and call it four, and that's a back shoulder ball. Somehow Bowers made that catch perfectly thrown by Stetson. Tough for his man to make the catch. First and goal. McIntosh takes it straight up the gut, and another touchdown for Kenny. One receiving, and now one rushing. <laughs> Dejon Edwards comes in. Bennett fakes it to him, throws off the back foot. He's got a wide open receiver, and it's caught inside the 20 by Dominic Blaylock. Fielded that like a punt. Coaches the line of scrimmage as Georgia quick over the ball. Let's see if they try it again. They do. And it's a touchdown. Ten. It's Davis. Actually a fake to Davis. It went to McGowan. He lost the ball, and Georgia picked it up. It has been whistled dead at the 15. You want if you're Clark Lee. His dogs are back on offense, and Bennett finds a wide open Darnell Wash. Look at Darnell Washington roll down the sideline. Big O is near midfield. With some urgency here. Bennett, another completion to McConkey. McConkey's free. And he's tripped up inside the 25 by Jalen Mahoney. Third and goal. Somewhere John Stinchcomb is sending a text to Bobo as we speak. Bennett, good ball, and it's another touchdown pass. This time to Dominic Blaylock. Yeah. Tennessee currently uh, special teams gaffes versus an offense that is explosive as Tennessee is and continues to be Warren Brinson the junior from Savannah in the backfield pitching against Alabama up 11 there this is to get Vanderbilt on the board from 44 yards and Bolivis hooked it no good fell on that shoulder Still trying to get that thing loose. On second and ten, it's Edwards. And Dejan has a first down run, and he gets free. Down near the 45, where Mahoney trips him up. It's a gain of 20. Got the negative yardage play. If he makes this, he once again matches Rodrigo Blankenship, who was one of the people honored before the game. And the, Podlesny and Rodrigo are the most accurate kickers in Georgia history. I feel like we might have said that before. Second and 18. Bennett down the field. Squeeze that in there to Washington. Come on. Spin it up. Can he keep a clean pocket? Vanderbilt doing a good job affecting the pass. Perfect on fourth down this year. And they still are. What a ball to Kiaris Jackson. Georgia history several times this year before missing a field goal, which knocked him below. If he makes this, he is once again ahead of Rodrigo Blankenship as the most accurate kicker in school history. It's 34-0, the number one team in the country. Carson Beck in at quarterback, turns and hands to Branson Robinson. Robinson stays on his feet. Oh. The first down for Georgia into Vanderbilt territory. That's what you want to see from a true freshman. Not just from the running back. This is a heck of an effort by number 22 here in the fourth quarter. Robinson, or Edwards rather, leaves the backfield all day. Tart, perfect ball to Bell for a touchdown. That was too easy.
Allen on third and six just dumps it off to Smith, and Smith gets drilled, but short of the first down at the 30-yard line. Bullard and Walker were there on the third and goal. Beck, touchdown. Eric Gilbert with a touchdown for the Georgia Bulldogs. After everything this young man has gone through the last couple of years. Georgia is now wearing 44. He comes to Athens. See if Vandy can move the chains on a fourth down. Watch out, Mike. Nylon Green, no one saw him. It's a turnover on downs. That's pretty dominant. That's a massive understatement. Almost gave up that field goal, right? In the first half. Cash Jones, house call for the freshman from Brock, Texas. 36 yards. With Georgia, Alabama, and others. Uh, I mean, last year was a full-blown rehab job on this roster. Mentally, he had to rehabilitate that team. They're light years different. Now, you'll say, oh, what's the biggest difference? Well, these guys have been competitive. Not today, but in other games they have been. Chase McGrath for the win for the Volunteers. From 40. On the way, a knuckleball. He got it! And here they come. First at six, we have some sad breaking news to share with you. Legendary University of Georgia football coach and athletics director Vince Dooley has died. A statement from UGA says Dooley died peacefully this afternoon at his home with his wife and their four children at his side. This is a man who played football at Auburn, but he spent his entire coaching career between the hedges in Georgia, which is a rarity in college football these days. And Georgia really honored him throughout the years, especially back in 2019 when they renamed the field at Sanford Stadium Dooley Field. He's a part of the Georgia Football Hall of Fame, the College Football Hall of Fame. But here he is a couple of years ago talking about that very honor when they renamed the field. But I, I quite have to say that I was quite surprised when it happened today. Well, I don't think that I should have got, ever gotten wrapped up in this being uh, so important to me. It's more important to me with my family, with the football players, the coaches, the team, the staff, everybody that has been a part of uh, the success that I have enjoyed. And uh, if there's anything that, that I would want, it would be for them more so than just a personal uh, salute to me. Coach Julie, I'm the current head coach of the Georgia Bulldogs. Kirby Smart shared a really special relationship. I can tell you guys there were so many times when I would be there for media availabilities throughout the week in Athens, and I would look over and just see Coach Dooley sitting in the corner waiting to hear from his friend Kirby. So I know Kirby's certainly going to miss that. But a really cool moment you saw shine through on the field after the Dogs National Championship in January. They were able to embrace each other. Dooley, of course, the last coach to win a national championship. So, so cool that Dooley could be there in Indianapolis this year, and it's going going to be something that a lot of dogs fans are going to be sad about throughout the weekend. Certainly we'll hear from Kirby Smart hopefully later today. Nine degrees, a little bit of a breeze, a little unlike Jacksonville maybe for this time of year. The 100th or 101st all-time meeting, depending on who you listen to. Georgia has a 54-44 and two advantage and they've won four of the last five. A couple of years ago is when Florida had their last victory. Florida won the toss and deferred. Trace Max got it teed up. Kiaris Jackson waits back deep for Georgia. And here we go. 
the dogs will start at the 25 yard line. As we take a look at the Papa John's lineups, backfield with Richardson. Four man rush, Georgia. Richardson throws a little bit low, and that's blown up incomplete. Zipper, the intended receiver, and Kamari Lassiter let him have it. Meanwhile, Georgia's second possession from the 34. Stetson Bennett off the play fake, throws, and that's a perfect strike to Brock Bowers. So this two tight end formation that everyone in college football is noticing. Bowers. Ooh, big collision, McIntosh and, and Montreal well, Miller. Yeah, Montreal Miller right there. You got to block number one, the edge. Throw out to the other tight end. Big O. Donnell Washington. And he's a load. They list him at 6 7, 270, and he says, I'm, I'm a little bigger than that. Yeah. Move. And now he does have company in the backfield. Quick throw to the outside on a wide receiver screen. All the way to the one is Dylan Bell. The true freshman, another one of those recruits. This guy's going to get some balls, and he's got wheels, doesn't he? Edwards, touchdown, Georgia. That was pretty. Started off throwing the ball, but balance. Three runs, four passes, and they knock it into the end zone. Eight play drive. Yes, half of them run, half of them pass. That's the balance. And here he comes. Richardson got it to ETN. The open field, he's not going to get a first down as he got rocked at about the 42-yard line. Yeah, but the pressure, as you said, from the inside. I remember that big defense, difference. big difference. Yep. Second down at five, they fake the toss sweep and come back the other way. Bowers caught it twice, and he's still running. First down, Georgia. And last year it was Zanir White and James Cook. Now it's Dejon Edwards again. McIntosh. Edwards still running. Back in now. Kendall Milton, also part of the Georgia rotation, has been injured. Little dinged up. Back down the middle. Darnell Washington still taking Gators with him to the two yard line. Second and goal at the two. Kenny McIntosh into the middle of the pile and into the end zone goes the whole group. Touchdown, Georgia. So how about this, Ness? Back-to-back -back drives, eight plays each. This time a little more heavy run, five runs instead of four and four again, but a little bit of everything. Approach one minute in the quarter. And hit and drop for a loss. Montrell Johnson. And Nolan Smith, who does that pretty frequently, fourth offensive possession of the game. Stetson Bennett going to go deep near sideline. Got it. Uh, wait a minute. I don't know. Maybe it's an interception. That's what Florida's saying. I thought Georgia had it. I thought right he, let's there. See, he comes down with it. Before he, he got down, I think it was ripped away on the play. What a play. Wait. And a great job by the officials on the field, guys. What a huge play. And now Richardson in trouble. Got rid of it as he's about to be sacked. That's going to be intentional grounding, though. Intentional grounding. Offense, number 15. The ball will be placed on the foul. Lost it down. Second down. Another look for this Gator defense. First down from the 17. Bennett pump takes one way and lost it for oh, Washington. Man. And he sort of short armed that one. Can't throw it any better than that if you're Stetson Bennett, can you? It's at the end of the half, three turnovers and from there, a national championship quarterback. And 29 touchdown passes last year. This one's knocked up. Bowers tips it to himself, and he'll score. Touchdown, Georgia. Seventy-three yards. I thought this one could have been another pick, right? Yep. And he's in a stand-up stance right in the middle of that defensive line. On a stunt coming around the corner of the throw. Complete, but well short of the first down. And it's going to be another putting situation. And 
What do you do if you're Florida? Got to get something moving here on offense. ETN got a couple. So this offensive line for Florida is the best in the SEC. They've only given up five sacks so far coming into this game. One so far. But that's with a mobile quarterback. Now let's see how they hold up with a guy who's most likely going to be throwing right in the pocket. That's where he is right now. He's going deep, far side. And caught. Beautiful throw and catch to Justin Shorter. He really was. And with that in mind, they run it here. And it's only a yard game. Jamon Dumas Johnson made the stop. And that's fourth down. That's how you play defense. Defense, can they get out of the half? They didn't get out of the half last year. Bennett stops and fires in and out of the hands of McConkey. Oh, and Cal, second big drop. Ricky Pearsaw in motion settles in for the slot. Richardson has to scramble this time. Pocket collapsed in a hurry. And again, he takes a shot late at the sideline. And he won't get the first down. And he also went out of bounds, so Georgia does not have to use another timeout. Third down and 10. Bennett loads. Fires back shoulder to McConkey at the 10. Flags are down. He's inside the 10. I think it's going to be on McConkey this time. Defense oh, number three. Wow. The penalty is the call. He's over the play. I was with Post you center. all the way on that one. Really? Yeah. <laughs> That's shocking. Six seven matchup here to the top. And Bowers, the other tight end of the slot. Bennett slant McConkey touchdown. Well, as we talk about who he could throw to, Stetson Bennett gets to choose who he wants to throw to. Yeah. Kirby's going to throw a timeout. His defense, oh! Oh! Yep, going to be first That's down. going to be first down now. So the whistle came late. Some players kept playing. And first down Gators on a timeout. Richardson looking for a block. Got to the edge and got a first down. Tough run. Anthony Richardson. And the play clock down to two. Just got it off. ETN got the corner. First down. He sure did, didn't he? Up a touchdown in the third quarter all year. That might change right here. It does. ETN touchdown, Florida. You always love when a team, everybody out here, all the Florida fans, everybody's talking about how can this happen 28-3. But the players on the field go in at halftime and say, you know what, we're going to come out and figure out a way to score some points and make it a game. So now let's see what Stetson Bennett and Bowers, who's in motion, can do for Georgia here. Their opening possession of the third quarter. McIntosh. And the ball came out. Still squirting around. Florida's got it. Brenton Cox, I think, or Trey D. Johnson broke a tackle, got a first down, and then some. So how about that? You go transfer to transfer. Louisiana's offense is moving the ball right now. <laughs> it is. With the play fake. And a deep ball, and it's intercepted. Picked off Amari Bernie, who almost had one earlier, and now he's got one. There's a flag now. So Georgia tried to go wheel route, and if that sounds familiar, that was two years ago. Kyle Trask burned Georgia with the wheel route, but this time Bernie has a great coverage, and it's one Stetson Bennett should not have thrown, not even tried to throw this one. The result of the play is an interception by the defense. After the play, personal foul. Under Sarah Ruffus, intercepting team number 22. Half the distance to the goal, first half. Rashad Torrance is going to be called for the penalty, so it's going to still be Florida ball. Third down and six. 
Georgia trying to get a stop and avoid any more Florida points off that turnover. Richardson all day and rifles it down the sideline. This is Xavier Henderson and he is gone. Touchdown, Florida, 78 yards. So there might have been some Florida fans that left, but the Florida football team didn't leave. No, they didn't. He really has, but the two turnovers, two drives, two turnovers for Georgia. One of them was a fumble by this guy, McIntosh, and he blasts his way for another 11 yards and a first down. So in this half, Georgia's first drive was one play to McIntosh and a fumble against Utah in week one. <laughs> Second down and 12. Bennett hasn't thrown since that last interception. Fires this one. And caught. Boy, that was a tight window. Rosemary Jack Saints. Field. They'll give it to him again. And again he comes through and he'll score. Touchdown, Georgia. Blasting off the right side. And the dogs with a 22-yard touchdown by Edwards. Well, watch Xavier Truss and Brock Bowers run the counter this time. Left guard and H-back number 19 does more than just catch passes. Pick him up, find him, and cover him. Pick up a 20. Now back to Johnson for two or three. That might bring the third quarter to a close. So Florida with a big third quarter. To get back in the game, even though they still trail by a couple of scores. A lot of football left. End of three. Georgia 35, Florida 20. Fourth quarter is coming up. Stetson Bennett's throwing. Interception. Fourth and six. If we get Georgia a short field, if they can get a stop. And they almost had Richardson, and now they do. He throws it away. Yeah, I, they bring him down, and Georgia takes over. Yeah, I don't get it. I'm sorry. Another one in them. Fourth down and seven. All man to man coverage. McConkey in motion. Blitz coming off the edge. Flags are down. Might be a free play. Bowers has got it. To the four yard line. Gamble pays off. He does again, shows his ball skills. McIntosh in the backfield with Stetson Bennett. He'll get the carry. And he'll get the touchdown. Wouldn't give up. Well, he wouldn't give it up, and Broderick Jones, number 59, did not give up either. He blocked, and then watch at the end when he shoves him in. Georgia's defense trying to close this out, but Richardson's making it hard on him, and now they close it out. There's the sack they've been waiting for, and it's Michael Williams. Kirby Smart still directing traffic over there for that defense. As Richardson drops to throw, pressure coming again, down he goes again. Now they're putting Chambliss, who got close on the last play. He did. Yes, he, he got did. it. He got home this time. <laughs> Richardson has to throw it away, and that's the ball game. Well, I'm going to give the Gators a lot of credit. I mean, it's 28-3. A lot of fans that really don't under sport, understand sports go, you know, why are we even playing? Who cares? Turn it off. But when you're lining up and you're playing and you have pride being with your buddies, they fought the second half. I give them a lot of credit. That's a good good thing for the future, a good sign that Billy Napier has a lot of guys that are willing to fight. He just needs better players. Yep. And Georgia, 8-0, 5-0. In conference play, Tennessee's next. You know, to the duties back home in Athens, I know they're together. Um, meant a lot. Uh, 
for us to win that game for them. And, um, you know, all that Vince has meant to our university and such an ambassador of our program and really all of college football. So uh, I know if he was looking down on that one, he would have enjoyed the first half. I don't know if he would have enjoyed the second one, but uh, he and Eric probably had a laugh uh, together about it. And um, he's meant so much to us and just in honor of him and, and their family, uh, it was special. It was a tough time um, for that to happen. But our fans were awesome here. Uh, the environment was good. Uh, we lost momentum in the second half. We faced resiliency, stared it in the eye, and we didn't blink. And I'm really proud of our players. You know, there was a time there where we lost momentum, and um, that's happened to us more this year uh, than it did last year. And we bounced back. So I was really proud of the players. And number four. And there is Clemson. Clemson goes to Notre Dame this weekend. Tigers have had some near misses, too, and they've got a little bit of a quarterback situation. Yeah, I don't know that they have a situation. Clemson, probably for the past two years, even though they won 10 games last season, they haven't jumped off the screen at you when you watch them. Uh, and you're, you're expecting to see an explosive offense that we've seen over the past few years, and we're not seeing that yet. So I can see Clemson being a team that is like, hey, if they went out, they'll be fine, but they're not – jumping off the screen at me and make me think, wow, they're, they're a great team. And that's why I wonder why they're at, at four ahead of Michigan when Michigan's offense jumps off at the screen to me. And the defense has been pretty dang dominant this year too. So, interesting. We knew the three teams at the top almost certainly. The order is fascinating. What can we learn from the committee, at least in the initial rankings, by how they have them stacked up? At number three, Oh, Georgia denied okay. a one versus two matchup in terms of now Georgia. Also, Dang. Georgia kind of messed around with Kent State, Missouri. They got pushed to the end by Missouri yep. surprisingly, and, and maybe that's the reason they're paying for it. They do have the big win over Oregon on the resume. Yeah, that, the win over Oregon, the win over Florida. Two times this season, we've seen Georgia have to get up for a game. It's time to go prove something, and they've done that very well. The ones in between. 18, 19, 20-year-olds, national champs from last season. I can see them sleepwalking through those games. Those don't bother me as much. Happiest guy in the world right now is Kirby Smart. They don't, <laughs> they don't respect us. And here come the big orange. Is Tennessee two or one? Who's two? Ohio State is number two. And, and that leaves the big orange of Tennessee for the first time. And now this ninth year of the college football playoff that Tennessee has been ranked number one previously. They hadn't even been ranked in the top 15, hadn't been ranked at all in the previous five iterations of the college football playoff ranking. So it's Tennessee, Ohio State, Georgia, Clemson. And we can now see what they are. As you look across the landscape, you've probably already seen this, but we're gonna show it to you again. At number six, Alabama at seven and one. At number five, Michigan to the surprise of this room. We'll get to that in a second. At number four, Clemson at eight and no. Some also surprised by that. Number three, Georgia coming in, which means at number two, we get Ohio State. And for the first time ever, the number one team, according to the college football playoff committee, is the Tennessee Volunteers setting up a Saturday matchup between number one Tennessee and number three Georgia that will answer a lot of these seeding conversations. But before we uh, before we break it all down, thoughts at Tennessee and number one, Christine. Uh, yes, that makes complete and utter sense. I feel like eye test and resume, those are the two things that we always talk about the committee looking at, which one they, can, they care about more. And I feel like Tennessee passes both of those tests, so it makes sense that they're at number one. AJ? Uh, I mean, I, I don't hate it, but um, I'm not in agreement with it. Who would you have put at number one? Uh, I would leave Georgia there. Um, Georgia was number one last week. They're, they haven't been beaten. Uh, I, if you're the number one team in the country and you've been there for most of the year, uh, until somebody knocks you off, I, I don't see why you get jumped. But they haven't been I, number one because this is the first rankings. 
Yeah, see, the playoff rankings aren't it's supposed to AJ, take into account the, the AP poll or the coaches' yeah. poll. It, listen, it, we can't we can't go by one set of rules halfway during the year and then change all of a sudden. Like, it doesn't make sense. To well, me. I mean, we actually could because the rest of the rules don't matter. The CFP actually decides. 100%. This every, is like the first ever ranking. So if this is the first ever rankings, if we started ranking the college football season right now, forget about the AP poll, you wouldn't have Tennessee at number one. No, I wouldn't. You would have Georgia at number one. I would. Based off of... Uh, the way they played, uh, they've I had guess. one. Yeah, they've had one letdown week against Missouri. Um, at Missouri, I've played there before. It's a tough place to play for whatever reason. Um, so, I, me personally, I, I would keep Georgia. Uh, you can make the argument that Georgia has a big win over Oregon. Outside of that game, if you eliminate that game from their schedule, the rest of their com opponents are combined 22 and 26, and only one of them right. has a winning record. That's South Carolina, right? If you look at Tennessee, they're coming off of a win that, frankly, looked good against Kentucky, uh, where their defense played better. I'm not saying Kentucky's great, Kentucky's but Tennessee also has horrible. Well, I right mean, now. horrible is, is, is a bit of a – horrible is a bit of a statement. But <laughs> Tennessee is uh, – they have the best win in the country. I right. mean, the win over Alabama would be the most significant win anybody has this year, Who right? Who has Georgia beaten so far this season? Oregon. Yeah, That's Oregon. Really everybody else sucks. Right. I so, mean, who has who Tennessee really played, Well, though? Kentucky's better than the teams. That, Kentucky's better than Missouri, right? Uh, right now, I don't know. Oh, oh. Tennessee. Kentucky, you, there's no way you can watch that Kentucky versus Tennessee game. And Tennessee's secondary is just as bad as Alabama's. And Alabama's secondary this year is bad. Okay, so... And Kentucky couldn't move the ball versus Tennessee one bit. Not, not, not a chance. So, um, no, I, I, if Kentucky played Missouri right now, I, that is an honest answer. I don't know who would win. Well, uh, the committee told us Tennessee's number one. Eric Ainge is a former Tennessee quarterback. Does a radio show uh, there in Knoxville of, like, the former SEC quarterbacks who are working full-time in the media – He's about the only one I know of at all that's never kind of gotten a call up to the SEC network in any form or fashion, which probably tells you everything you need to know. But uh, nonetheless, uh, you may have seen this by now, but let me read this tweet to you. Eric Ainge on Twitter saying, Playing between the hedges is overrated. It's not that loud, and it's definitely not intimidating. It's nothing like playing in Nealon. Vols will be just fine in Athens. So that's Eric Ainge, former Tennessee quarterback. And, you know, clearly he's just saying this to get attention. We all understand that. But we're going to give him the attention. We're going to give him this attention, as I said before. I'm going to use his troll tweet to troll you because I want you to be even madder about going into Saturday. And even if you're not going to be in the stadium, I still want your vibes, uh, you know, with sort of a game face on type mentality. We're doing all of this for a very specific purpose here. I am trying to stir the pot as much as I possibly can because I want Sanford Stadium to be a house of horrors on Saturday. Moving on to Tennessee, who's uh, done a tremendous job. Uh, I got a lot of respect for Josh, always have. Um, I know him as a player and, and now as a coach. You know, he was at Missouri for a few years uh, early on and um, had a lot of success. Um, and now he's moved to Tennessee and done a tremendous job. His entire staff, they've done an incredible job with, with all the work they've done. Um, and our guys are excited and looking forward to uh, Top matchup um, in Sanford Stadium. I know uh, our fan base will be loud and proud. I want to challenge our fan base to be. I mean, everybody talks about the Notre Dame game, but we want it to be louder than that. We want it to be there earlier than that. We had some great matchups last year here at home, and I thought they really affected uh, the game um, each time we had a big matchup. So we'll need them again and uh, need them to be ready to go. The perimeter of one of college football's grand stages meticulously sculpted wall of Chinese privet between the hedges. But the famous flora has never framed a game like the one that will unfold on Vince Dooley Field today. Tennessee, the big orange, flies in at warp speed, number one in the CFP. The reigning national champion, Georgia, number one in the AP poll at rare one versus one showdown. Athens juiced for a game of mythological proportions. And it's a huge day in the SEC. Baton Rouge has the after party. There are road traps in the top ten. Big Orange may be the darling of the moment, but the champs might remind them exactly who's that coming down the track. We, we've got a dog fight. That's right. Smokey the old blue tick right. hound and Ugga. Look at Ugga's yeah. face. Desmond, who's going to win this thing? I, I just love dogs and um, 
you know, Smokey is right here next to me. So for this dog fight, I'm going with Smokey and the Tennessee Volunteer. Let's go, Smokey! Oh, That's a no. pretty dog. Look at Smokey. Oh, no. I'm <laughs> going a dog. Come bro, on, man. That, that's, Look at Smokey, bro. Uh, he's beautiful. I he? know. I wish Hugga, I could take I him home. I love too. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you, you, with this show, we went to, to Knoxville for the Florida game, and yeah. I picked... Florida. You did. And Tennessee one. Yes, you did. Then we went to Knoxville again. A couple weeks later, they played Alabama. You and picked I picked Alabama and sure Tennessee did. one. And everyone's yeah. telling me on Twitter, make sure you pick Georgia, Georgia. to win. Right. Guess what? What? I'm picking Tennessee. <laughs> oh, the jinx is in. The jinx is in. The jinx is in. I apologize. I apologize. Oh, from the heart. No. From the heart. Can I change my super dog now? Here we go. 2-8. Oh, oh, man. Come on. This is my first time in Athens, and I'm going to say this place is it glorious? absolutely beautiful. There it is. There it is. We had, a, we had a little drizzle earlier, and you know where I come from. Rain makes corn. Corn makes whiskey. Whiskey makes... He forgot the lyrics. Feel a little... No. They, they make whiskey in Tennessee. Uh, so I think the rain is making the whiskey. What? That's being drank all over. Good old Rocky Top. Rocky Top Tennessee. Give me the volunteers, Luke Bryan. Sorry about it. Sorry about it, Under. Tennessee, a team of destiny in Luke Bryan's fight. Chill out, Flair. Rick Flair, Chadlin Flair, Georgia guy, Rick Flair. Listen. We're gonna step on their faces. All right. We're gonna crush their dreams okay. with a hobnail boot. <laughs> it's all dogs. I called my guy in Vegas. I went heavy in Vegas on my dogs. Eight points don't scare me. <laughs> Keely Ringo. Keely Ringo. <laughs> Go. with a hobnail boot or a Tennessee's dream season. Can you give him some sugar in there, Luke? Give him a little kissy. There you go. Chuck, now it's the present. Georgia has won five straight in this series. We've had some pop-up showers at times, but a light wind in 77 right now. Sanford Stadium has been on this plot of soil for 93 years. This is the biggest game that's ever been played here. You ready? Can't wait. Let's do it. Paxton Brooks to kick as Tennessee won the toss and the throw. High short kick. Dejon Edwards. Oh, man, he took a shot at the 20, but he bounced out to around the 23-yard line. From the 47, Tennessee thinking about a blitz. Edwards trying to bounce it offside, and the ball is out. Tennessee almost had it, and I, Bennett, I think wait a minute, he still might. Tennessee's got it. Bennett got on top of it, and then it scooted out of there, and to Marion McDonald has got it. Beginning of the year. Jalen Hyatt has become that due to Tillman's injury. And flags fly before the snap. I think with the tight end fan or inside Carvin. All start offense number 53. Five yard penalty. Made first down. So they're calling it on the center, but uh, might have been Carvin. Might have been set right in that inside of that offensive line. Long game. Tennessee's a 50% third down team as well. Hooker down the middle, broken up. Georgia breaks it up with a flag. Smile Munden is the guy that was defending, but let's wait and see about the penalty. I didn't know. Hard to snap, there was no play. False start, offense. So that's Number two 80. of them already. Five yard penalty remains third down. And that gets in your head after a while as an offense. You start listening to stuff that you shouldn't. It bothers you that you're making mistakes. The crowd, as Kirby begged for, has been a factor. The third down at 10. 
And here comes that crowd again. And the Georgia defense asking for more noise. Hooker down the middle. It's complete, but well short of the first down. Might be in field goal range, though. On the pass to Fant over the middle. Ness, when you consider that this Tennessee offense for the season has scored touchdown on half of their possessions, when they get the ball, they've scored a touchdown every other time they get the ball. Holding for a field goal try is what you're trying to accomplish against these wide open offenses. Chase McGrath, who we saw hit the game winner against Alabama, will line it up from 47 yards out. Kick on the way. Dead center. Good opener for Tennessee. They had it moving. Georgia stiffened defensively and forced the field goal. Tennessee takes the lead early. Both tight ends and McConkey in tight on the left side as Bennett drops to throw. Going to air it out. Man out there, and it's caught. Arian Smith. Big play for the Dogs. The speedster number 11. Back to the ground, McIntosh. Little move in the hole, and he's still moving. Kenny McIntosh all the way to the 13. Missed. In this game. Third down and 10. Georgia can get a first down around the three. Bennett, pressure coming. Got away from one man, and now he's going to tuck it and go with it. Got the first down. He might have the touchdown. It was in this game a year ago that Stetson Bennett showed his legs the extra dimension. A free blitzer, and that's a touchdown. I don't think After he is personally. Hughes, the ruling is touchdown. The other was inbound. The firm controlled the ball, and he touched the pylon. Jason Autry should have just saved that extra sentence because as soon as he said touchdown, yep. 93,000, well, not quite 93,000. There's some Tennessee fans and here. We just heard from the truck that the replay official did look at targeting and said it was not. He agreed with Gene. The guys that went to the NFL a year ago. Third down at six. Hooker. Now he's going for the knockout shot. Hyatt's out there and he overshot it. Incomplete. Fourth down. So George's first punt. From Brett Thorson, upcoming. D. Williams stands back around the 30 for Tennessee. Oh, a rocket. Wow. And it's still going. But is it going to make the end zone? Oh, it got the corner. Goodness. I mean the corner. Corner. That's a 75-yard punt. At the one. 75 yards, as Gary said. And back in there in the slot to Hooker's right. And the crowd is trying to make it as difficult as possible on Hooker down at the goal line. From his own end zone. He waited too long, and down he goes. And it's going to be a safety. Did the ball get out, though? I think it might have been recovered by Tennessee. He gets out. As the quarterback lost possession of the ball in the end zone, it was recovered by the end, the offense and advanced to the half yard beyond the goal line. It is fourth down. This should be reviewed, though, because Javante Spragans' knee may have come down in the end zone. Before he stretched that ball out. Exactly. And Gene's with us as well. The fumble, I agree. I don't believe that's a forward pass. He's bringing the ball back. So I've got hookers with a fumble. What I see here is I think I feel, guys, if he still has maintained possession of that ball, that he is down before that football. And let's remember, that entire football must get back in the field of play in order for, for it to be in the field of play and not a safety. And in my opinion, when that O-lineman gets recovery there and starts to be uh, getting tackled, that football is not clearly out of the end zone, and that would result in a safety. And I think his knee came down as he was leaning forward, even before he came down. His knee is down now before the play, and the ball gets even to be close to the line. So 
I'll bet this thing is overturned for two points. I'm going to back away. We'll let Jason Autry tell us. After video review, the ruling on the field stands. Fourth down. Half down the other Oh, my goodness. Well, all right. It's a punting situation then. Oh, my goodness. That was the least likely, in my opinion, to tell you the that truth. That would have been about my third choice. Yes. Dejon Edwards behind Stetson Bennett, who's under center with Brock Bowers, the motion man. Play fake. Bennett loads it. Fires to the end zone. McConkey touchdown. One play. Six more points for Georgia. Not only have they never been able to drive the ball, remember, this is an offense that scores every other time they get the ball. Right. Touchdowns, not field goals. The Georgia defense has been impeccable so far. It's been Georgia-like so far. That's the way defense. to put it. Brooks to punt. They got close to him. I... Tallywagger going down, and McConkey. he was hit as he tried to make the fair catch. He obviously made the fair catch signal, and then he got hit. So that's going to be a penalty on Tennessee. Play. And those first two or three Picking. false start Picking penalties didn't help him either. I mean, another silly mistake right foul. there. I mean, you can't Georgia. get that close when a guy's signaling fair catch. Kenny McIntosh checks back in with Bennett in the Georgia backfield, second down and nine. Bennett, going to go deep again, Kenny McIntosh out of the backfield and on the run, all the way down inside the 15, another uh, chunk play. It's called the wheel route, Kenny McIntosh is their best wide, their running back receiver. Bennett looks left, goes high, touchdown. Rosemary Jack Saint in the very back of the end zone. See if he got one foot down. He got two foot down. That's all you need. <laughs> it's over there on the bench. First, Stetson Bennett. He's got some moves as well. Second touchdown pass for him. It's 21 to 3. Okay. It's hard to keep the spread going if you don't run the quarterback against Georgia. He only ran once, and that wasn't by design. Here he's set to throw. Maybe. No, he won't. Sacked. Covered. Coverage sack again. Waltower got to him. Blitz coming. Hooker stands in over the middle, incomplete intended for his tight end and broken up by Javon Buller. To get points out of this, no matter what it is, so Chase McGrath comes in. Seven-man blitz from the Georgia defense on that last play. 36-yard field goal attack for McGrath, who hit from 47 earlier, and this one's up and perfect. So the turnover early, they force a field goal. A good drive again, forcing a field goal. The 39 of Georgia. Hooker going to go long to the near corner to Tillman, and it's intercepted by Keely Ringo. Four minutes and change remaining here in the quarter. Edwards straight up the middle. Into the secondary, still going all the way out to the 45-yard line. Bennett. Throw is complete. McConkey, first down and more. And I tell you what, when you climb that pocket and you have ability to go into that, instead of running, you got a quarterback that wants to throw the ball. That's ingrained in Stetson. Take your time. You can see him right on the bottom of your screen with his palms down. And then a dual jump pass to McConkey. He's inside the 10. First down, Georgia with 12 seconds left. But in retrospect, they'd love to have one more. So short field goal at 19 yards is up and good, and that will end the half. And that'll make it a three-score game, which is what Kirby said to Stetson. Stay away. I'm taking the points. Eight-play drive. Keep the ball. Hooker running out of time. Oh, and 
Took a big shot in the backfield. He's going down. And that was Javon Dumas Johnson. Third down and 13. Blitz coming off the corner. Hooker's in trouble. He's going down. Dropped at midfield by Warren Brinson. Four for six for Georgia. And the rain is pretty heavy, as a matter of fact, right now. Trying to get those tackles for loss. Third Numbers, down again. They need um, it here, don't they? Quarterbacks way in favor of Stetson Bennett. Third down and nine. McConkey in motion up top. Bowers is on that side with him. The throw's going to McConkey with Bowers blocking for him. And McConkey's got not only a first down, but a lot more. All the way to the 40 yard line. Up and good. Tack three more on for the dogs. Means the edge rushers have a tough time getting there. Try a draw play, and the ball is out, and Georgia's got it. Terry and Ingram Dawkins. Remember, Georgia, last time they had a sudden change, had a one-play touchdown from that spot, and now the ball is out for Georgia, and Tennessee's got it back. They do. So it's getting a little slippery down there, and both tailbacks on back-to-back -back plays cough it up. Passes because the run is always available. Georgia brings an extra rusher. Hooker finally going deep. Man there. McCoy, and he overshot it. Man, it was an amazing throw, considering Hooker got hit just as he let that ball go. Tennessee looking for that big chunk play that they're not able to... Get today, and it's not going to come there either. Tillman leveled immediately by Keeley Ringo. Jenny. Hooker waiting too long again. Down he goes again. Hooker is going down again. Same blitz that got him before. Hooker, that one sailed on him due to the weather, I think, and incomplete, and Georgia takes over on downs. Hooker's in trouble. Got away from it. Now he can't throw, and he walks out of bounds with a one-yard game. Here it comes again, man coverage. Throws down the middle and got it. A strike down near the five-yard line to Hyatt. Delivered finally. They got the play they wanted. Seems a little late, though. And they got a touchdown as well on the next play, Jalen Wright. So first it was Jalen Hyatt, then Jalen Wright, and Tennessee finally has a touchdown. Conservative Georgia offense was a three and out. So you, you kick it deep and try to use your timeouts to get it back, or do you go onside kick right here? You know what I already said I'd do. I'd go onside kick. They have not had an onside kick this year. They haven't needed one. They need one now, and here it comes. Going the other way, and Georgia's gone. And Washington's got it right at the 10-and-a-half-yard mark. Yeah, that was a good stop by the them, and had a nice bounce to it. Well, it's lined up. Here comes the Georgia Blitz. Hooker standing tall, going deep. Far sideline, just over the outstretched arms. Now Princeton Fant, the tight end. This one's manageable at third down and three. Hooker goes across the middle, broken up. Incomplete intended for McCoy. And Will they do it again? Jalen Hyatt in motion. And now they've shown their play because Jalen Wright went in motion and now stopped in the slot on the right. So Georgia knows where he is. Hooker thought about running. Now it's too late to run. Down he goes. Ryan Davis with another Georgia sack. Ryan Davis started in the middle. There was an audible called by Georgia. He shifts at the last second. Under five. It's there now. Now the quick clap. All the way down to one, and the toss to Edwards. Edwards broke one tackle, weaving his way. That'll do it. What First down, Georgia. Snap, and Georgia goes to nine and zero, oh. six and zero oh in the conference. I don't remember a single Tennessee wide receiver ever running free.
the entire afternoon. And keep in mind, every one of us has such a vivid, fresh recollection in our mind of Jalen Hyatt just running loose in the Alabama secondary. And it was none of that today. And then Kirby talked about once the rain set in, it was really nice to have a multi-possession lead because nothing really was going to happen through the air after that. But it is so incredible. We got into the fourth quarter here. And if you do your math right, uh, which I'm not the best at, but Dennis, there was a point here late in the game where Tennessee had one more point on the board, six, than Georgia had total defensive first-round draft picks last year, which yeah. was five. Yeah, no, that's true. I mean, Kirby talked about it in the post game how physically he wanted to be this week. We know Georgia's always physical, but there's an offensive side to this. Georgia, to me, totally resembled what Tennessee was supposed to be, yeah. at least early. They took shots, uh, and they took shots because they knew they could take shots against. We talked about it before the game, uh, not a depleted secondary, just isn't that good. Right. And so Lab McConkey, who looks like, you know, Phil, uh, obviously, uh, is that type of receiver. So they go over top to him. They go over top early to uh, to one of the other receivers. And at that point, at halftime, it just seems like it's over. Good stat. They, they led 24-6. Georgia is 117-1, and leading by 18 here since 2004. The only loss was to Tennessee in 2005. Huh. So there's your little nugget. The defending national champ against the number one team in the country, Tennessee. Alabama, LSU, buckle up and enjoy. Stetson breaks the tackle, goes for the pylon, that's a touchdown! Throws it back line of the end zone, reaching catch, he got the feet in, touchdown! Hooker, deep ball, intercepted, Georgia remains undefeated. Kelly says, we're going for two, and the dub, Daniels for the win! Over. It is Georgia and everybody else. The Georgia Bulldogs are indeed the clear cut number one team in the country. After last week's convincing win over previously top ranked Tennessee, tonight they take on their fellow Bulldogs from Mississippi State on a chilly night here at Davis Wade Stadium in Starkville. Here for Jim Donnan back in the uh, mid 90s. He said his players came and said, Coach, we got it. That's not yep. what we're about here. We don't take anybody lightly. We're focused on the business at hand. They need to be focused on covering this kickoff. Mississippi State, the best kickoff return team in the country, but no chance for Tulu Griffin, who's the individual leader in kickoff returns. He catches it with his hands, and then he breaks tackle. 15-yard gain. Bennett on target again. And it's the other tight end, Darnell Washington. Inside the 15-yard line. Washington lined up in a trip formation, and you see right away these two tight ends, again, the most dynamic position on the team. 30-yard catch followed by a run by McIntosh. He took it down to the one-yard line. An impressive opening drive. Kendall Milton now the tailback. Play fake wide open. Brock Bowers the touchdown. How can you not expect on third down, they might look for one of those two tight ends. It's a two at one. They just did get it off, and the pass is batted down. Smile Munden came on a blitz and knocked it out of the air, and Georgia takes over on downs. Four-man rush. They pressured Bennett. His arm got hit, and it is intercepted. Colin Duncan bringing it back for State. He shoved out of bounds by Darnell Washington. Watson, the linebacker. Nice pocket for Bennett, and he's on target to Lad McConkey for the first down. Their leading receiver made 83.6. Percent of his field goals, 51 out of 61 in total. And yeah, that one is good. By Stetson Bennett with his eyes. Bennett for Kiaris Jackson. What a catch. What a grab. For all tie. That was the final score of the game, the Georgia 31-24 win. Bennett. Shake and bank. Touchdown. Stetson Bennett. Xavion wow. Thomas.
Back for the Brett Thorson punt. Short. Davion Thomas! Davion Thomas! Touchdown, Mississippi State! Kirby Smart got greedy at the end of the half, and he paid a big price. Deep side and very wide. Two of them outside the numbers. Quick slam. Low throw incomplete intended for Griffin. March right down the field on the opening drive. Haven't been as impressive. Here comes Vlad McConkey. He's got Vlad great McConkey. Speed. He may go. Vlad McConkey. Touchdown, Georgia. 70 yards. Loss of three. And that's going in reverse as well. Ra Ra Thomas. There's nothing to cheer about there. A big play, even though we're early in the third quarter. Four man rush, lots of time. Stetson Bennett for Jackson. Kiers Jackson, another deep ball catch to the 34. The 30 yard pickup. Two tonight. 50 scores on 51 red zone possessions, 98%. Bennett zings one to the goal line. Touchdown, Len McConkey. The penalty against Forbes was huge, and it opens the door for a 17-yard receiving touchdown. They look like pretty good looking sweatshirts too. He has it batted down and is it intercepted? intercepted? Looks like it is. No signal yet. Iris and here Lee. it is, another interception. Second of the night for the MSU defense. With the minus two tonight, both on Stetson Bennett interceptions. Will Rogers has a man wide open and a touchdown. Rufus Harvey. Here comes pressure, he just got it off. McConkey, another catch. Down to the one yard line. By the state defense. Here's Pod Lesney. A 22 yarder. Stetson Bennett is the holder. And it was nearly blocked. They hit the kicker and the flag's thrown. Emmanuel Forbes came off the corner. Sleep penalty right there on Emmanuel Forbes. Personal foul, roughing the kicker. Defense number 13. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Conti's almost as many total yards as Mississippi State. Play fake. Wanted Bowers, settles for the other tight end, Washington. Touchdown, Georgia. I think he's being a little humble in that assessment, but they're both outstanding. And Jalen Carter. So is he. Yeah. Will Rogers dump back inside the 20. There's George Georgiopoulos against the first sack of the game for either team. Georgiopoulos draws the flag as he was hit while punting. There's that late shift again. Swing pass. Marks upended and he's short. Kamari Lassiter. And Todd, you made the point earlier. Len Schumann, the defensive coordinator for Georgia, said one thing that he thinks Mississippi State has really struggled is key third downs and fourth downs. Getting even uglier for Texas A&M. They are behind 10 to nothing at Auburn tonight in the fourth quarter. Looking at their sixth straight loss. Rufus Harvey 
could not take it in. That's dramatically different than all the other quarterbacks that are in the running is touchdown numbers. Now he has three tonight, which gives him 14 for the season. Here's Kendall Milton busting free into the end zone. Touchdown, Georgia, 34 yards. And, uh, took care of business tonight in a hostile environment on the road. To Lou Griffin, laterals it off. Rufus Harvey, Simeon Price out of bounds, and it is over. Stetson Bennett throws for 289, three touchdowns, two interceptions. He ran for a touchdown. Kirby Smart really appreciates Will Rogers, effusive in his praise from yesterday. Congratulations to Coach Smart. SEC champs again in the East for the fifth time in seven years under Kirby Smart. Okay, we're going to start at the top now because I think it's a foregone conclusion. Everybody knows the number one team is still going to be Georgia. And it is. Georgia is 10-0 and number one. We assume that not much is going to change right at the very top of the rankings. Number two. Still Ohio State. Still Ohio State, understandably so. Buckeyes have Maryland this week. Michigan has Illinois. I assume I'm about to see Michigan at number three. And we are. <laughs> You're trying your best to make this suspenseful. Well, I mean, they all want, you know, Michigan's 10-0 under Harbaugh for the first time. And they are. So there are the four undefeated teams all. And the Frogs showed you something. I mean, the Frogs stoned Texas last week, especially defensively. And you talk to Boo every week, Reese, and he talks about being one-dimensional and maybe the defense not matching with the offense. I think TCU proved that last week that they can win different ways. Okay. We'll be hitting the road again, We're going to a uh, tough place to play in the SEC, which they all are. Um, this is one of the challenging ones. Uh, they got a great environment. Uh, Mark Stoops has done an incredible job there uh, with the program, uh, coming off a tough loss, you know, against Vandy. And um, I know we'll get the response uh, from them that you would expect out of a, a team that's. Uh, the quality of Kentucky, you know, they've done a tremendous job the last two or three years with what he's done with their program. He's built it through uh, keeping players there, uh, developing players, um, extremely physical and tough. When you ask our kids over the last two years what the most physical game they played in to a man, almost every one of them talks about how physical the Kentucky game was two years ago up there and then at our place uh, last year, you know, where they went on a 20-something play drive uh, against our defense to end the game. Um, and their defense is one of the tops in the conference year in, year out, but uh, that way this year as well. So great challenge for us to go on the road, uh, tough environment, um, day game, and looking forward to the opportunity. Georgia won the toss, and deferred Kentucky will receive. 
Wasn't this nice yesterday? Still some strong winds, 38 degrees, but the sun is out. 76 meeting between these two teams. They played annually since 1956, and Georgia has owned the series the last 12 years. Going to have to hold the ball. Twice it's rolled off the tee. And the wind swirls down here on this field. It might be deceiving when you look at the flags on the top of the stadium and what you've got down on the field. Todd Lesney's got it teed up. Barry and Brown stands and waits at the goal line. And just about then, something from the Georgia crowd rolled out there. I don't know if it's a red pom-pom, but we're underway. 11 inside their own three. Levis in the end zone, loads it, fires far sideline, caught him! And a first down at the 35 to Barry and Brown, the guy that dropped the opening kickoff, just made up for it. A defensive flip. And he's not going to get it, Rodriguez goes down, Georgia's defense stiffens Munden again. Along with Dumas Johnson and Georgia will take over on downs. It's moved the 43, Bennett. Looking left and now going deep sideline, overshot Donnell Washington, he was open. Hard to do too. 6-7 <laughs> plus, overshot him. We'll, we'll say though, the, the wind is a factor in this football game, especially throwing. Kenny McIntosh broke one tackle and a second and drags Wildcats for a first down. What a run. They can get a first at the four. Stetson Bennett flushed out of the pocket. Now he's going to try to run, and he only got back to the line of scrimmage. Goal attempt. Remember, there's pretty strong winds going on right now here in Lexington. Low snap. Bennett got it down. But Lesney got it through. Boy, nice play by Bennett on that one, and that's a lot of trust from your kicker. You just got to feel that football being there when it isn't. Empty backfield. Levis on second and eight. Trying to get it out to Brown, and Georgia's all over that. Yeah, Kam Kamari Lassiter, yeah. open field tackle. Levis going to run with it. Will Levis got the first down. Diving forward. He laid out on that one, didn't slide. He knew he had to get the extra yard in midair, and he got it. Rodriguez going to lose yardage here. We said it doesn't happen often. Georgia stops him. Maybe a one-yard loss. Jenny, remember they picked up a third down and 11 on a penalty. So another long yardage. Fires and intercepted by Keely Ringo. And Ringo bringing it back the other way and still going. Keely Ringo, who won the national championship game against Alabama, has got it all the way back almost to midfield for the dogs. Yeah, I think there's a flag down on the play. It might come back, but Ringo again makes a great play. He did it against Tennessee last week. Brad told you he did it in that national championship game to ice that game for Georgia. But this time, Levis tries to stick it in between the safety and the corner. Doesn't get it. Came all the way After out to the, the 47. The legal block in the back. Number 88 of the intercepting team. Followed the half the distance. First down. So you can forget the 47 yard line that I just said. They're going to bring it back. Jalen Carter called with the block in the back, trying to help his teammate on the return. Home side of the field. Third down at three. Empty backfield. Stetson Bennett going to loft it over to Kenny McIntosh. McIntosh inside the 35 and a first down, Georgia. Right. Right. Kendall Milton in there now. Bennett off the bootleg. Throws on the run to the side on dart over to McConkey. McConkey inside the 10. And it's first and goal. And again, look at the patience he has. He's played so many football games. Even as you're away playing junior college football. Todd Lesney, 18 out of 20 on the year. Out of the steps in better hole. This one, it's down clean, up clean, and through for Georgia. So again, they took over with the Keely Ringo interception. Got it back around midfield. Looked like they were going to get in the end zone, but they have to settle for three. It's just six nothing, Georgia. Georgia, right now, you, you're wondering how willing will Will Levis be to run the ball after he tweaked himself on that. In a scramble up there for the first down. Gatton McLean in the backfield with Levis. Third down and four. Georgia comes with a blitz. Levis throws it. One-handed catch, but 
He couldn't keep his balance, and Jaton McLean goes down well short of the first down. And then tight with the tackle. Opener for McIntosh. Kenny McIntosh still going all the way to the 39-yard line. Best run of the day for Georgia. So they could have kept the clock going on that play. As it is, but Lesney gets an opportunity for a 37-yard field goal. He's two for two today. He's three for three today. And that'll end the half. Big call. Georgia got a big break there. I thought that guy was going. Pazuzzi was going backwards. Excuse me, not Pazuzzi. The play Bowers. before Bowers was going backwards. And Georgia caught a break. Come up with a big play on defense. Kenny McIntosh with that big run before the end of the half. has got about a 13-yarder to open the third quarter. And the wide receiver and a quarterback. Play action. Stetson Bennett's going to go deep. Oh, man. And he threw it right to Kentucky. Intercepted at the 10 by Jordan Lovett. The gunslinger fired his gun way late on this one. After that false start, Andy Key shot out and threw out and a loss on this one as Jaton McLean gets drilled inside the five. It's the second time Lassiter has made this play on the quick screen. Remember early? Caddis didn't get the block. Well, this time, no block again. Milton again. Kendall Milton again. Big run. Still bouncing off. Would-be tacklers to the 36-yard line. Arnell Washington from the nine. There's Bowers in the flat. And there's the oh, touchdown look. by Kenny McIntosh. He's done it either way. Beautiful design play. Handed off for the run, had Bowers to the wing, three plays in one, like triple option offense. Do they dare blitz? Play clock down to one. Just got it off. They're going to bring pressure from the secondary. Bennett throws, almost intercepted, but it's caught by Blaylock. Dominic Blaylock. And a big play for Georgia. That was so close to being a pick six going the other I, way. I got to say, when he threw it, I went, uh-oh, to myself. On third down. Talking about the great Billy Sims, by the way. McConkey in motion. They're going to keep it on the ground. Little sidestep, and McIntosh, not only the first down, but more. All the way down to the eight-yard line. Well, he beat the early penetration, and then after that, it was over, wasn't it? And they've only given up 119 yards to Kentucky's offense, so... They're going to try to nail the coffin right here. And oh, no. Oh. Kendall Milton didn't get there. Nice job by Kentucky's defense led by Jamaris Dinkins. Take it five yards deep in his own end zone. And now he's going to run with it to get himself some room to work and might even have a first down out of it. Rodriguez got a nice block. First down at the 11. Rodriguez, strong run. There's the Chris Rodriguez we're used to for about 15. Levis, pressure coming, going deep. Got a man there and got it to him at the 35, and it's Barry and Brown, one of those young guys Gary just talked about. Position. Levis, slam, touchdown, Barry and Brown. One for two. Beautiful design play by Scaringello that time. This would make it really interesting in the next 10 minutes. Let us the fade to the corner. Overshot Barry and Brown. The guy that caught the touchdown pass. Bowers in motion to the inside to help block for McIntosh. They're not going to get it. Nope. No gain on third and two. Deion Walker. Came in and got a piece of him on uh, nine plays last time. Will Levis getting some pressure, but going deep. The ball is wobbling in the air, and it's caught again by Barry and Brown. You better bring your passing game if you want to move the ball against Georgia. One, but it was taken away by penalty. Otherwise, they haven't hit Levis. They're coming at him now as he lets it fly, and he got it to Barry and Brown again. I think it's a first down, don't you think? It looks like the forward progress is past the sticks at the 18, I think. 
took about 11 minutes and was at the end of the game. So it was more lopsided than what we're seeing right now. Five minutes to go. Ten point game. And second down and nine for the Wildcats. Blitz coming off the corner. Levis is going down at the 20. They finally got to him. Javon Bullard, who had a huge game against Tennessee, is a rusher, and he's got another one here. 37-yarder blocked. This is his first attempt today. This is from 38 yards to try to make it a one-score game. Sixth-year senior Matt Ruffalo. Bad snap and a bad kiss. Bad. No good. The laces were right at the kicker because of the bad snap. He did not have enough time to spin it. Chance Poor was trying to get the ball off the ground on the snap from Cade McGraw, DeGraw, and that one never had a chance. Nope. A nine. And here comes Stetson Bennett. He's going to get a first down and tiptoes out of bounds. First time today he's used his legs by design, or McIntosh in this case. It's McIntosh behind Bowers playing fullback. And it's Bennett trying to do it himself, and I don't think so. Nope, he did not. They even tried the quarterback push, and it didn't work. Fourth down. Levis loads and goes over the middle. Incomplete. If there's no flags, Georgia will take over. And there aren't any. And Kentucky has no other way to stop it. Kirby Smart knows that he can take the headset off now. On penalties and things, but I give Kentucky a lot of credit for bounce back, being a really physical football team, and we won the line of scrimmage tonight, which we had to do. So when Dal opened it up. Coach, what's the message when they are limiting possessions like that to your offense? Not to press, maybe just do what we do? I mean, you're only yeah, we, three we knew it was going to be that. We had three possessions in the first half. I don't think they had but three. And we, we talked about you know limiting the number of plays we would carry, get really good at what we do, be efficient. Uh, the efficiency was there, other than the red area, um, and it, it was tough in the red area. They, they, they do a good job. They jam pack you down there. They don't pressure a lot. They uh, they have lots of levels in their defense, um, and our probably inability to run it in the red area hurt us more than anything. But you know, it gave Pot a chance to uh, be clutch, and he was. Those those are not easy kicks when you got 16, 17 mile an hour winds blowing around. And that was red area was a problem all night. Why why would when you take points there on the last possession when you got your fourth and goal? Because I feel like to win a game, you need to be able to run it in for fourth and one. And if you don't get it, they got to go 99 yards. Those are decisions I get to make. One team, according to the College Football Playoff Committee, is the Georgia Bulldogs. 11-0, they go into clean, old-fashioned hate against Georgia Tech this week and then have the SEC championship game against LSU after that 16-6 sort of slog fest in Lexington on Saturday. Number two, it is the Buckeyes. You know what awaits them on the banks of the Olentangy. Buckeyes and Wolverines meeting with perfect records for the first time since 2006. Winner goes to the Big Ten championship game. Now, I'm interested to see after Michigan's latest near miss. Now, I know TCU had one, too. Michigan or TCU at number three? Going to hold serve with the Wolverines? And it will be. It'll, so, it'll be two versus three for the Big Ten East championship. And TCU, the fourth unbeaten team, I assume will be at number four, and they are. So that's how it is. Those are the four teams that control their fate. Obviously, either Ohio State or Michigan will have a loss at the end. So, on to the Georgia Tech uh, program I, I know a lot about and uh, a coach that I have a lot of respect for. Known Brent for a long time. He played uh, at Tech while I played at Georgia. We played against each other and um, we've spent some summers together and uh, have a lot of respect for him as a coach. You know, he was. Uh, at the O-line coach at Alabama one of the years we played them and they did a really good job. His, his offensive lines are always physical, um, get after it. Uh, a lot of familiarity with their staff, with ours, um, Chip Long, uh, Chaney, and all the guys that have been over there. So uh, they're playing really well now, they're playing really hard now, and I think he's done a tremendous job getting these guys to compete. Nothing better than the scenes of a rivalry weekend here on Thanksgiving weekend in college football. What a scene it was in Columbus. 
And here in Athens, we are set for a rivalry game as well. Clean old-fashioned hate for the 116th time. Georgia Tech and Georgia will meet. The Dogs have won four in a row. Georgia Tech, though, coming off of a big road win against North Carolina last week. And they are looking to win another thriller here at Sanford Stadium, just like they did six years ago, as we welcome you to ESPN College Football, presented by Marathon. This is the SEC on ESPN. Not just the traditional rivalry weekend in college football, but also the tradition of Senior Day. And one of the great Senior Day stories in all of college football, Stetson Bennett, as he came out to meet his family, the roars of the crowd here in Athens at a short time ago. Chris Button spoke with his parents. Four quarters of defensive football this season, 24 of those quarters, the other team has not scored a single point. So when I talk about complete, they really don't have a flaw on their football team. And candidly, Bob, they're just a joy to watch on tape. It's a lot of fun. This environment's going to be incredible today. It's one of the best in all college football. And by the way, last season, Georgia had 15 players drafted yeah. off of last year's team. Not a big drop off. Which, of course, was a record. And yet, they're the number one team in America again. As Georgia won the toss, deferred to the second half. Georgia Tech will begin with the football. And then I guess it's probably something smart to the head coach. Kirby Smart putting his defense out there first. Yeah, 11 points a game given up by this defensive unit. A fair catch called by Hassan Hall at the two-yard lines. Georgia Tech going for it. Here comes the blitz. One-on-one, -on -one, flip down the sideline, drop right down the chimney to McCollum. It is first and goal, Georgia Tech at the seven. Is their entire play calling structure as well, doesn't yeah, it? You can go the zone read world and the designed quarterback run. Pumachan on a keeper. He'll cruise to the end zone for an opening touchdown for Georgia Tech. Pumachan to come the one-two punch. Here's third down and ten. Back shoulder throw to the sideline incomplete. Another opportunity for Leonard, and he couldn't pull that one in either. Four-man rush. Slant. Fits it in. The freshman Dylan Bell has a first down. Four-man rush. Stepping up in the pocket, Bennett keeping his eyes downfield. Going to take off and run again into the red zone. Toe taps along the sideline. Close to a first down. He's got it. Down to the five-yard line. And it's a 30-yard try. And he just does squeeze it through. But a red zone stop for the Georgia Tech defense. Georgia on the board. 18 seconds to go in the opening quarter. Blitz coming, they pitch it to Smith. Stiff arm, stretch to the sideline. He may have squeezed out a yard. State with the early lead on the Wolverines as well. Kenny McIntosh, right up the gut, into the open field. Caught from behind, breaks a tackle. McIntosh rumbles to the Georgia Tech 35. Before he's brought down, he picks up 45. John Edwards again, inside the 20, down to the 10-yard line before he's brought down. 18 more. In the heart of everything that Georgia Tech does defensively. McIntosh back in on third down and goal. Instead, Bennett to the air. Into the end zone. Climb in the ladder! Jackson! Touchdown, Georgia! Look at it. Four-man rush. Flair pass Felix. And he will maybe get back to the line of scrimmage. Jamon Dumas Johnson made the stop. Actually lost a yard. Play action again. A deep throw down the sideline again. And it's there. E.J. Jenkins. All the way out near midfield before he's brought down. Scrambling and getting the first down and more is Gibson. 
He picks up 13. He can get very close to field goal range without picking up the first down. Wheel route. Nothing there. Dumas Johnson rifles over and buries Dante Smith. Now you wonder if Georgia might call a timeout. Show blitz. They'll rush only four. Bennett, he's going to take a shot down to the end zone. In the back right corner. Arian Smith did not have control and went out of bounds as the official says incomplete. Ball. Let's see what decision he is going to have to make. Rolling on the field stands. Incomplete pass. Now the crowd doesn't like it, but I think they got it right. Yeah, I, I just think, again, that initial bobble really forces that left knee to touch down first out of bounds. And it will be a field goal attempt for Podlesny to try and stretch the lead to six. Last year, from 51 yards away, to try and stretch the lead. It's got plenty of distance, and it is right down the middle. The dogs settle for three. Is not going to get it done. And now it looks like Georgia might be coming after David Shanahan. So Tech tightens it up, and Shanahan drops the snap, and Georgia will drop him in the red zone. Stetson Bennett looks that way. Here comes the pressure. He throws one, and it is caught. Bowers inside the 10, down to the 5. Bennett waited for the slant to come open, and he hit his big tight end for 10. Inside the 1, I formation. Milton is now the eye back. Play action. Bennett into the end zone, under throw, scooped up by Bowers. Touchdown! <laughs> It hit. Bowers took it right off the top of the grass, oh, and it was ruled a completion and a touchdown on the field. Does the ball touch the ground? Hands, to Chris's point, are, you know, as consistent and as reliable. Felix may have lost the ball. A takeaway for the Georgia defense. And a late flag thrown right in front of the Georgia bench. To hold to only a field goal attempt and keep the game within reach. Podlesny good again, but with 4.11 to go in the third quarter, Georgia Tech, after giving up 10 points, in short order trying to stay in the game tomorrow. Four-man rush under pressure. And he dumps it off underneath. Ringo there to break it up. And Georgia Tech will have to kick it away. They hustle back up to the line. Bennett, off play action, looking downfield. Deep one, down the left sideline. Drops it in! There goes Kenny McIntosh! McIntosh inside the 10, out of bounds! It'll be goal to go with a flag throw. tackle on the defense number 20. That penalty will be a force half the distance to the goal from the end of the run. Automatic first down. On the play action. McIntosh caps it. Touchdown dogs. National championships. Coaches aren't going to leave national championship contending teams with a quarterback that's not good enough. Well, Felix lost a yard on third down and eight. And so you had to figure that's a play call on third down saying we're going for it on fourth down. But now it's fourth down and nine. Three best guys are guys who had to go earn it. The blitz picked up. Gibson takes a shot, but throws it up over the head of EJ Jenkins. 
So Georgia Tech will turn it over on downs near midfield. Of, you know, their season's been a season that's had a lot of distraction. Milton right up the middle, padding the lead for Georgia to the house. 44 yards. <laughs> Minutes to go after the injury timeout, third and 15. Zach Gibson, pocket collapsing, sacked. Back to the 20-yard line. Michael Williams, MJ Sherman. And it's back on a keeper, lost the football. And it looks like it's scooped up by Clayton Powell Lee. So Carson Beck, a little late on the wheel route. Ace Ely knocks it away from Carson Beck. Georgia Tech playing for pride on fourth down and one. They'll toss it to Smith. He wants to throw it. And the trick play bobbled but works. Malachi Carter for the touchdown. Beck takes one final knee, and that will make it official. 37-14, Georgia for the fifth consecutive meeting with Georgia Tech comes away as the winner. And now Kirby Smart will get his team set for LSU and the SEC title game. Coming up next, college football scoreboard for Dan Orlovsky and Chris Budden and our entire crew. I'm Bob Oshusen saying so long from Athens. 37-14, Georgia wins it. Vince Julie tie, and could you imagine coaching on the sideline in, in a tie like that? Well, I was going to, and I chickened out. I had a distraction from the seniors, and uh, I didn't want all them saying, well, we don't change uniforms, why did you? So I decided to wear it to the press conference if things went well. Uh, but I told Derek, I asked Derek if I could, and Derek <coughs> and, and uh, Miss Barber were both like, oh, we'd be honored to let you have this tie. And, uh, this is the tie he wore for so many games, uh, and, and Derek gave it to me. And um, I probably don't do the sweater and, and shirt the justice that he does, but uh, out of honor to him, no visor, and he did it. He did it. Uh, he did it right for a long time, and he meant so much to this community that it's just a small token of my appreciation for all the things he's done for University of Georgia and Athens. Okay, let's do number four. SC, as expected, Trojans play for the Pac-12 championship against Utah at number three. Number three is TCU playing for the Big 12 championship against Kansas State on Saturday at noon. College game day will be there. Now, Georgia has been number one for a majority of this ranking season, but Michigan now has the best win of the college football season by going on the road to Columbus and handling the Buckeyes, pulling away from them in the second half. Is that enough to make Michigan number one or the Wolverines holding on to number two? Let's see who number two is. Michigan. So that means Georgia hangs on. Now, Georgia's got great wins, too. They have a neutral site win against Oregon's quasi-neutral site. It was in Atlanta. And the home win against Tennessee when the Volunteers were at full strength. Enough in the committee's eyes to hold off Michigan. LSU and Georgia. It's go time for the Bulldogs. They know what time it is. They've been here before. They got championship pedigree. Georgia big over LSU. Congrats to Brian Kelly taking LSU to the SEC championship in his first year coaching down there in the Bayou. Disappointing loss to Texas A&M. Doesn't matter. Georgia rules like some dogs. I think, you know, LSU <laughs> will be in the game for a half. But because Georgia starts slow, usually. That's nice of you. But I think second half, <laughs> Georgia will roll. Yeah, I can see that. Georgia wins for the second time in Atlanta. They won a yeah, first game in Atlanta. Bookend. Georgia. Bookend. LT, I think you might be right. Just playing inspired and an underdog. That scene is one of the best scenes of the year in college football. Both those fan bases will fill that place up. I think it maybe <laughs> I say that, but then every time you say that, Georgia comes out and just flattens an opponent. So Georgia, we just know, is going to win this game and look good. And don't forget, Georgia's probably going there in the playoff, too. Yes. In Atlanta. To play in the Good luck in that. How yeah. about the Big Ten?
for a reason. You know why we do it different? Why we do it different every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? So right now, you already got that quiet confidence about you. You already did it. You already did it. You already did it, AD. You already did it, man. You did it on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Now you get to go out here and lay into somebody's fucking ass. We do it different here, okay? And the game plan is simple here. Fucking chopping wood and bringing these bitches down one chop at a time, okay? And you know what I love about it? I always always love the best when, when I did something good against somebody good. And I broke somebody's will that said they were tougher than me. And them motherfuckers over there, they think they're tougher than you. They think they're more physical than you, okay? And we take what they want. We take their heart by fucking pounding on their fucking ass and doing it for four quarters. The men in this room will out-execute the men in that room. And the best thing is, guys, when you take the best shot, when you take the best shot, you stand up smart. And the motherfucker's like, holy shit. 33rd meeting all time between these two teams. LSU has won four of the last five. Georgia in their fifth SEC championship game in the last six years. The last time LSU was here, they won it with Joe Burrow and company in 2019. LSU won the toss. They want the football. Noah Kane is back deep. Awaiting the kick from Jack Pudlesny. For an SEC championship, here we go. And LSU will bring it out to the 25-yard line to start offensively. They actually lost yardage on that play. Daniels, this time the pocket's collapsing, and down he goes. Georgia got to him that time. Jalen Carter is the guy that collapsed the pocket. He's hurting already. That was the question. You're okay, you're okay, you're okay until you get tackled. They've got to get down to the 13-yard line for a first down. Daniels looking down the middle, goes, completed it. Inside the 10 to the 8, Brian Thomas, and again he threw a strike. Daniels, here comes the heat, down he goes at the 15. Second sack on this series, and this is Chaz Chambliss. He went right through the tight end, Mason Kick Taylor that time. To try to put LSU on the board first. High snap. They got it down and it's blocked. Georgia stuffs it. And now here comes the run back. If this stands, it's going to be about a 95-yard touchdown. It will stand. LSU is acting as if it was an extra point. The ball is alive. Now John Emery back in the backfield. Daniels wanting to throw again. Down the middle and complete to Booty. And he's still running and he might be gone. Kayshawn Booty, touchdown LSU. 53 yards on a scoring strike. Behind him on purpose. 47th catch for Bowers. And now it's Bowers again on a crossing rep. And he's still going. Brock Bowers all the way to the 18-yard line. Well, the veteran quarterback, Stetson Bennett, remember a year ago, he was dueling against Bryce Young. That'll play right here in the quarter. Dejon Edwards in the backfield and gets in motion out of it. Bennett throws on the run. Bowers, touchdown, Georgia. Three catches on the drive. The last one's in the end zone for number 19. Yes, I love the way they used Stetson Bennett when they were down here. Emory going to be dropped for a loss. Great closing there by Michael Williams off the edge. And it'll bring the first quarter to a close. An exciting one. A 96-yard block punt return. And then the quarterbacks went to work. Georgia at the end of one by a touchdown. Run blitz. The throw high. Incomplete. Intended for the tight end. Georgia picking the ball up here. And that was incomplete. I think this was it was it caught in midair. Well, we better look at it again. It's an RPO. Gets there just as it happens. It bounces oh. off his helmet. Yes, that's an interception. Thought it bounced off the ground. So did I. But next look, it bounces oh, right off of his helmet. helmet. Tipped again, and then intercepted. Unbelievable. What? Shot, great field position at the 22. Let's see if they go for a quick strike. Bennett does. Got it. McConkey touchdown.
22 yards. Stetson Bennett to land McConkey. And how about this design by Todd Munkin, the offensive coordinator? Mason Taylor moves over on the left-hand side. They get it to Josh Williams, and he's going to get dropped for a loss. So I think right there with that call, you can see that this LSU staff does not believe Jaden Daniels is 100%. First down at the 46. Milton busted outside. Kendall Milton. About 25 more on that one. Oh, Bob Lesney has hit his last 11 field goal tries. No, he tried to back in. He tried to go to the right, then it hooked at the end, but not enough. Hits the upright. No good. Damn, good defense. Butkus finalist. Play that middle linebacker. And Daniels going deep. Man out there, almost got to it, and no flags. Slips a little bit as he throws. Still got it complete to midfield to McConkey in a first down. Coming around the end, got just enough of him. Well, fake late throw over the middle and still got it complete. You know, on that one right there, now that's complete. But you got the feeling, and as he looks over, that if that wouldn't have worked, he'd have to talk to Kirby yes. Smart when he got over, right? Yep. Bennett, down the middle, to the end zone. Touchdown, Donnell Washington. The big guy in the back of the end zone. Jalen Daniels would like to, but Jalen Carter's got him again. And I wonder if Kirby Smart will dare take a timeout here. Did you see that at the end of the play? Yes, he lifted him yes. up with one hand. One hand. My, oh my. I tell you, I think he's the best non-quarterback draftable player. Might even include those guys. But look at him fight through two people. And then watch this. Lift him up. With one hand. Oh, my goodness. Oh, game. Looks like he's maybe heading for the MVP of the SEC title game. This is Kiaris Jackson. Jackson, big gainer. Shoved out of bounds on the far side. Quick throw. McConkey broke a tackle. Heading to the end zone. Got it down to about the three. And took a big hit. And he is shaking up. Washington on the right side. Here's the rollout. Bowers is in the end zone. So is Dylan Bell. Touchdown, Georgia. Yep, that's the strategy. With a little rollout. The quarterback is athletic. Bowers was just as open. I think Bowers jumps in the end zone and go, come on, I can't get any open in this. Georgia three-man rush, late blitz coming. Daniels delivers again. Time out and LSU get a field goal try. First down at the 23 to Booty. A lot of courage on that drive, wasn't there? No doubt. Led by their quarterback. Besh goes up and catches that ball in traffic when he knows he's going to take one. Puts a field goal on the points here to close the gap a little bit before halftime. Ramos drills it. Good kick. And the rush was excellent by Georgia. They got close to him, but he put it through. On second and five, balls out again. And this time LSU has got it. Some confusion between who was going to keep that, whether Bennett was going to pull it out or whatever, and then it just harmlessly lay there before... Jacqueline Roy covered it, but there is a flag. Back on what's going on on the LSU sideline. All right, Jenny, thanks. Nussmeyer in the oh, traffic. What Touchdown. Play. Malik Neighbors. How about that in relief duty? Malachi Starks, number 24, the deep safety, thought he had it all the way. But the gun by Garrett Nussmeyer beat him. That's my loads and is going to go long again. Man out there. Got it. To the 15. Neighbors again. 
Three receivers to the right now. One coming back in motion. Josh Williams did not get it. Man, that's hard to believe. Shotgun give time for that defensive line to penetrate. Man, I'm under center, sneaking it in a hole right over here. I'm getting up. I'm pushing. I'm doing everything I can. The penetration was too much. They did. Nope, they go Quick short. slip screen. Yep. First down, a bunch more. Yep. Rosemary Jack Saints. He's got it all the way out to the 26-yard line. They let him throw, but they threw safely, right? They, they got it out there. Cincinnati, Notre Dame, and now here at LSU. Second and three. First down run. Kendall Milton, open field. Milton in a foot race. Kendall Milton pushing tacklers off. He's all the way down. First and goal at the two. McIntosh. Touchdown. Standing up. So the defense gets the fourth and in inches stop. Josh Williams, nice run, the biggest one of the day for LSU. Foot race. Georgia will track him down, but not before he got to the 12-yard line. He gets up hobbling a little bit. Kane. Touchdown. To the right side to the bottom of your screen. And Mason Taylor is always a good call. Down this close. He just went in motion and set up on a stack on the other side. That's my throws high and incomplete. Not able to get it to Brian Thomas. It's something I think college football should look at. And second and seven. Bennett. Whoa! What a strike to Bowers. He was completely blanketed, and that's Brock Bowers. And then it goes. Oh, oh no. dropping the mic. Oh, then, boy. Here we go. Hey, you want to play quarterback? You got to be a little bit cocky, right? Yeah. And George has got a second down and two at the LSU 41 to open the quarter. Dejan Edwards. Nice little juke move to the outside. Edwards. On the way, all the way down to 15. This formation has been so good to Georgia today. They bring their two tight ends, they shift them, then they bring their wide receiver, Rosamie Jack Saint, in. Got a five man right There's those two tight ends again, shifting from left to right. That's the power side. It's Kenny McIntosh behind the blockers. Touchdown, Georgia. Eight yard scoring run for McIntosh. Now the chance of UGA. Sound out, and Stetson Bennett's trying to quiet the crowd. They hit 50. End around, and a pass. And a two-point conversion to the guy that got the block. Give the man a little sugar. It was a Don Mitchell, number five, injured all year. They figured when he was on the sideline, he's been working on his throwing, right? <laughs> no doubt. That's my... Far side, intercepted at the goal line by Chris Smith. And now he's got a fumble return for a score and an interception in the end zone. Yeah, Chris Smith started out on the far right side of the field and never went to the middle. When he doesn't go to the middle, it's hard to fit the ball up to the top. He stays, he stays, he doesn't have that far of a run, and he puts a bead on this one. He's the leader of the back end of the Georgia defense, and he's been special again in this SEC title game. Georgia four-man rush on Nussmeyer. They had him. He got away. And now he's going deep to the end zone and got it. Touchdown, LSU. Jeray Jenkins. You know, I got to say, Field number nine. If Joe Burrow's watching this game, he's going to go, that's a good move right there. <laughs> Georgia crowd still making some pretty good noise in here. That's my going to go down. The ball is out, and Georgia's got it. Yes, I think it was Robert Peel, number 33, that came around the corner that time. You remember, he's the guy that missed on the play with the touchdown pass. This time, 
flushes him and goes for the ball and swats it out before he gets a beautiful play. Probably one more wink coming from Stetson Bennett though as he looks to the sideline. That'll do it. Your SEC champions for 2022, the Georgia Bulldogs. And still perfect at 13-0. So the playoff awaits in a little over three weeks. Stetson Bennett's probably going to be the MVP of this game as he was in both the playoff and the national championship a year ago. Go back and they're the fourth different team to be a number one seed in the college yeah, football playoff. Typical number one team. They just got better as the year went on. Dealt with the pressure of being the defending champs. The offense, you know, defense gets a lot of the attention because of Kirby, but the offense this year, juggernaut. Whoever matches up with them better get used to 12 personnel, running game, play action pass, and a quarterback that plays with a chip on his shoulder. Michigan here. There they are. How about Michigan? Soft non-conference schedule to start the year, but that win against Ohio State on the road, that was an absolute statement. Winning it by 22, and this is a very complete team offensively and defensively. Of course, we know about the injury to Blake Corum at running back. They're going to need J.J. McCarthy to continue playing the way he's been playing these last two games versus whoever they end up facing in the semifinal. But right now, this is the most explosive offense I've yeah. seen from Jim Harbaugh. Eight, or someone else sitting at number three. Let's have a look at the third ranked team. Hey, Whoa. all right. TCU oh. holds his place. This is what you expected. I will admit somewhat yep. surprising. I thought Ohio State would get that third spot. What do you think? TCU has earned this spot. They did it all season long. And so as we've talked about this team, and right there in the middle of the season, when they played four ranked opponents <laughs> and they won those games, and people started to Look at Doug. Look at Doug. Look at Doug. Right now. He's still, he's still <laughs> trying to catch his breath. Yeah. And yeah. he's still yeah. trying to catch his breath. This is the thing that they earned, not just this season, but building up to this. Sonny Dykes done a terrific job with his team in this in his first season. But this is a respect that they earned this spot. And it speaks to what they did all season long, not just yesterday, not just losing in overtime in a three-point game, but what they've done all season long, they deserve to be at number three. Well, I think the thing with TCU all year long was a lot of – TCU uh, said that they're the second team to make the playoff when unranked in the preseason. I want to posit this and build a little drama here. Ohio State, you know, been playing the conference championship game, they have the blowout loss. Alabama's got the closer losses. Maybe we're back to a 2017 thing. And while we spent last night saying TCU or Alabama, maybe it's Ohio State or Alabama here at number four. Are you, are you showing now or are you trying to create drama? We, I just built the drama. Here That's we what go. we do. It's oh, Ohio yeah. State. There okay. it is. No drama. So hey. the Buckeyes are in, and we don't have the rematch of the Michigan-Ohio State game yet. Instead, Ohio State will have to do what a lot of Buckeye fans thirst to do go into SEC territory, prove a point against an SEC oh. team. I think these teams are supposed to play in the regular season, and because of some scheduling things um, in the near future, they decided not to, so we'll get it in Atlanta instead. And I don't think anybody disputes how talented Ohio State is. They're, they're one of the talented, most talented teams in the country. Mm -hmm. They got stars. They got a chance to get a little bit healthy, too, with some of those guys. And so Ohio State's going to come in. And, and what did you say yesterday, Kirk? What did you say I, yesterday? I can't remember. <laughs> in, in the many flights, what did you say yesterday about everybody's going to tell them no, for the I, next I think, however I, many they're, weeks? They're, they're going to be poor mouth for four, three or four weeks. Yep. They're going to show up, whether it's good enough or not. There's always a team that shows up disrespected. Yep. And there's nobody that should show up more disrespected and, and angry than Ohio State. It's, it's a team the committee liked all along. They were number two in every college football playoff ranking up until last week. The resume stands for itself. Impressive win against Penn State and Notre Dame. And also from the eye test, too, watching them, they're much more complete than they've been in years past. You've had tremendous careers. We know you're all tremendous players and you're, you're tremendous people, and you're, uh, you're going to represent, all of you are representing the Burlesworth Trophy. You're in that family.
but we, I have an envelope, we have a winner, and so we will get to it here. <clears throat> the winner of the 2022 Burlesworth Trophy from the University of Georgia, Stetson Bennett. said that wrong, <laughs> but I love you guys. Um, Buster, you're the man. Thank you for being the voice of reason on a <laughs> crazy sideline. Um, thank you. you know, we, we've seen it all. We've been through it. Um, Steve, you the man. Thank you for uh, being a level-headed adult uh, that came with us all. Um, to my teammates, how about them dogs, baby? SEC champs, huh? <laughs> you know, I, I, I wouldn't be here um, if it wasn't for y'all, uh, the coaching staff, uh, you know, everybody in that, in, in that program, uh, you know, Everybody cares about winning, but you're all you're all great people. Um, and it's been a pleasure in my life being there. It's been a long period of my life being there, but it's also been I'm very appreciative of it. And I wish each and every one of the one one of my teammates could be here um, up here. I don't know if they could accept this award. There, they took the easy way out and got scholarships out of high school. Uh, <laughs> Aiden and Carlton, y'all two are studs, man. Y'all, uh, you know, I love football. And I know because y'all two are here that y'all love football. You know, there's a lot of hoopla and uh, other stuff that go into it. But at its, at its core, it's a pure sport and it's beautiful. And uh, I love everything about it. And I love being a walk-on because it allowed me to see that and it allowed me to grow up a little bit when I, I wasn't grown, you know, coming out, uh, still not grown. Hopefully I stay a kid forever, honestly, but, um, being a walk on humbles you. Um, but it also allows me to know you without knowing you, right? Uh, every other award, well, I, I don't know every other award, but most other awards, I would say, you know, you can look at it and you can, you, you can imagine that they are a good football player. Um, this one, you can look at it and, and imagine the person that they are. And you can be right, you know, I, I assume, Marty, you probably know better than I do, but uh, you can be right nearly 100% of the time. Um, and that's, that's because being a walk-on is not easy. Um, you know, and Wow, huge honor. I, I don't know what to say. But what I do know is that I feel like I know Brandon a little bit just because we've been there, man, and we've been down. Like, football, growing up, it was the thing that you were best at. Um, it was the thing that you believed in. Uh, it was the thing you, you, you spent the most time doing. Um, you know, you thought you were pretty good in your hometown, right? 
and then you walk on to college and, and, and come find out that, hey, this thing that you said you're best at in the, in the world, that you spend the most time at in the world, that you care about in the world, um, well, it ain't good enough to play here. And so when, when people talk about Brandon and, and his legacy, um, you know, it's hard to remember that, but I, I think it's important too um, because it, it, he, he didn't just run bleachers a lot, right? He didn't, he didn't just do more push-ups than other people. You know, he came out and, and thought he had a good practice one day, and then his coach still told him he wasn't good enough, right? And that's a, uh, that's a, long, that's a long look in the mirror. You know, that is, that's dark when, when you get down that road. Um, but that's why he's so special, because he took that mirror and he broke it over his knee, and he became an All-American, and he got drafted. Um, and so, again, thank you, Marty, Miss Vicky. Um, thank you for allowing me to be here. Thank you all for being here. Um, thank you all, too, for being studs. Uh, and uh, go dogs. Thank you. Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Kirk's calling the game. He's not going to make a pick, but what's the biggest key tonight, Kirk? I think Ohio State's defense, can they kind of get their feet settled into the game, reestablish their confidence, and how do they defend this scheme that they're going to go up against with the 12 personnel, the two tight ends? Can Brock Bowers have a massive night in, uh, in Washington, or can Ohio State do a good job of the, kind of neutralizing the run game and getting Stetson Bennett into obvious passing situations? Okay, so with all of that in consideration, who wins the game? I agree. I think Jim knows and that defense has something to prove. We've talked about him a lot this season. We thought he was going to turn this defense around. Obviously, the Michigan game didn't go well for him in the defense. This is his opportunity now to show that they are better defense than they showed us over a month ago. So I think that Ohio State is going to play well, but I think Georgia wins it. As Kevin Nagandi reported and Bear texted all of us, that point moving uh, in the favor of Ohio State this late in the whole game means somebody thinks that this is definitely going to be a close game. They like Ohio State. I love Ohio State. I think Ryan Day got the boys to buy in that 35 days. I think they got tougher. I think they fixed some of their problems. I think C.J. Stroud has become a leader and an incredible player. With that being said, the other team is a professional football team. They have been able to handle being the national champions, and they're in their building. There's nobody here. There's been nobody all morning. It has felt dead in here. But tonight, there's going to be billionaires barking. Okay, there's going to be billionaires barking. Grown folks in khakis barking in unison. I think tonight with Brock Bowers and the environment and the moment and the way Stetson's shown up, give me the Georgia Bulldogs, although I love Ohio. Georgia looks forward to being the first team in eight years to win the title back-to-back. -back. They're loaded. Now, I don't know. Do you guys believe in miracles? Hey, remember one thing. I'm the only guy besides Joey Galloway. For that is going to pick the Ohio State I'm not, Buckeyes. I'm not, I'm not making it. Pick. I've never won <laughs> Ohio State. Hey, you, you, I'm not allowed to make yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. Ohio State upsets Georgia. Give me that. Well, so much yeah. for wow. none and none. So much for none and none. Whoa. That's huge. Buster Douglas. Buster Douglas. Yeah, Buster Douglas. Oh, Land that big oh, punch. Oh, Dave Pash. Oh. Dusty Bull. <laughs> Dvorak. Tom Lugan. Bill calling the Sugar Bowl. Dave, take it away. There we go. Saturday night primetime, New Year's Eve. As much as I'm excited for Ohio State to right the wrongs of this season, this is going to be ridiculously tough. Ah, you couldn't ask for more Titanic battle. You know how prepared Georgia's defense will be for this Ohio State offense with C.J. Stroud. This isn't the first time they counted me out, and it won't be the last. Stroud, oh! We have a chance to be legends forever. It's a trifecta. You know they're defending national champs. You know we're going to be underdogs. You know we're going into their backyard. Good. At the University of Georgia, we ain't being hunted. We hunt. <laughs> Georgia is now the program against who everyone else tries to measure themselves. I think we'll talk history after we play two more football games. There ain't no doubt in my mind. This team is ready. Today we're going against the Green Apollo. Plays are going to be made, so you're either going to bark or you're going to bite. The talking is over. It's time to go play.
College football playoff semifinals Saturday shifts to Atlanta, the epicenter of college football. And the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl hosts the semifinal for the third time. And Xavier Johnson are deep. Jack Lesney, ultra reliable kicker to boot it away for the Bulldogs. Kirby's right, this is a great atmosphere. Johnson will let it bounce into the end zone. So here comes C.J. Stroud, who was spectacular in his only previous postseason game at the Rose Bowl. Georgia rushes forward, but they get home, and a quick sack. Coming on the blitz, Smile Munden. Aggressive approach from Todd Munkin, who calls the play as Georgia looking to throw again. Bennett across the middle, and the catch is made. And that's Mitchell making an instant impact in his welcome back game. They're threatening inside the 40. So they are five plays and five passes from Georgia. Really quick now. Bennett flushed, chased, and he'll take a short loss there. Knocked out of bounds, pursued by Steel Chambers. This has been near the edge of his range in games. And he drives it, but it drifts wide left. So the big stop on the scramble on third down and the missed field goal. And Georgia comes up empty on its first possession. Plenty of time for Stroud. Directing receivers, flips it to the end zone. Caught, touchdown! Marvin Harrison Jr. making a huge impact in the Buckeyes draw first blood 31 yards Bennett faces third and ten Buckeyes show pressure don't bring it and the ball looped to the sidelines and coming back to make a catch beautifully is Dominic Blaylock Eric haven't yet targeted Brock Bowers the elite tight end who's lined up on the left side of the formation Give it off inside Bouncing off tackles, Edwards roaming free, banging down to the Ohio State 35. They didn't wrap him up. Not easy to do. In release on a play-action pass. Milton is in the game. They fake it to him. Bennett rolls out and flips it on the bootleg. And there's the first catch by Powers, who's really hard to tackle himself. And the dogs are threatening. Cam Brown gets him to the ground, but they're in the red zone. Below average, but Ohio State's defense, Kirk, has struggled in the red zone, too. Bennett, he'll be dropped, had time, initially Steel Chambers got him, and then JT Tuyamoto out. That sack to happen there. Vanderbilt got him a couple times in that route, ball quickly out, McIntosh, knifing to the end zone, touchdown Georgia! Just like that, the Bulldogs bounce back. <laughs> you see a lot. Stroud on the move, bootlegs back, and once again, finds Harrison, and Marvin Harrison Jr. tracked down from behind, they knocked the ball loose, could Georgia collect it? No, it bounced out of bounds, it was knocked out of his hands by Keeley Ringo, but they couldn't collect it, and the Buckeyes move it inside the 15. Still eight on the play clock. And it's a design run. They don't do it often. Bulldogs were ready for it. Chaz Chambliss. Stroud has time. Flips into the end zone. High and over the head. But here comes a flag. The Mecca Buka was well covered. Georgia fans saying uncatchable. But that's a P.I. in the end zone. Looks like Bullard would be the guilty party. Pass interference. Defense number 22. Ball replaced at the two yard line. Automatic first down. Nice split wide. And they're going to hand the ball off inside. Williams powering forward, drives the legs and scores for Ohio State. That has been missing in recent weeks. Mayan Williams with a physical run. Buckeyes back on top. Yeah. It's been a long time for Eddie Mitchell to. Make impact plays. Already gotten involved tonight with a couple catches. McIntosh is the back. It's McConkey in motion. 
Bennett avoids the rush and delivers, but it's intercepted. He threw it right to Steele Chambers. And the first bad decision by Bennett tonight and the first takeaway of this game. But he would like to have rolled out to his right, but Jack Sawyer wouldn't allow it. Jalen Carter goes off the field. Now they bring in tailback Chip Tranum, who was a linebacker until a shift midseason. Stroud harassed. He escapes again, and it's in. No, go to the end zone. Punt. Touchdown, Harrison again. Stroud. Like a maestro escapes the sack and delivers a strike for the second time to his star receiver. Kendall Milton is the back. And it's going to launch downfield on the run. Caught! Arian Smith, the speedster, makes the catch down to the Buckeyes 10. Great deep ball by Bennett. Double down the middle. Backer's got to carry that. Milton makes a cut. And bangs down near the goal line. Touchdown! He got in. How about that answer by Georgia? The 47 yard play sets up the touchdown run. Let's make sure Milton got across the goal line here. What an effort. You saw Mayan Williams with an effort. Look at that. Extends at the end. To me, Bill, it looks like he, Bill says it is a touchdown. They rush four, and Stroud is going to be harassed. Simulated pressure, and that's Williams who gets home. McIntosh wins the deep setback, and he's got the football, and he's got a crease in the clear. McIntosh, one man to beat. Touchdown, guys, double. Are you kidding me? The turf monster got him at the 10. It's about to the left here. McIntosh in motion. Bennett's going to run it. Can he get the edge? He walks in. Touchdown, Georgia. We both appreciate Todd Monk and his personality, but also his play design. It's just beautiful. Yeah, right? He's right here. It's Rossi in motion. Stroud's going to try to make it around the edge. A flag is down. I don't know if they were set there. It's going to be I, illegal motion. I, I think, think Rossi moved towards the line of scrimmage before the ball was snapped. He was in motion, and I think he moved towards the, the, the line before the ball was snapped. Illegal motion. Offense. Five-yard penalty. We play fourth down. Well, we got a chance to see that Day was putting his money where his mouth is. He was going to gamble. They were going to make it, if not for the penalty, easily. Oh, what a call. Play clock at three. And it has time. Delivers over the middle. Strike. First down. Rosemary Jack Saint. Rolling down inside the 35. Found some space in that zone. And Bennett delivered a dart. The young receivers that were inexperienced all year. Boy, they, they arrived today. Yeah, they called Jack Bod. Missed earlier from 47. This from 32. For the first lead of the game for Georgia. And this one inside that left upright. So they were down 14, and now they're up three, a minute 44 before the break. Time in a row, they're working the middle. Stroud has rediscovered that rhythm, flips it right down the middle. It's Johnson who's got it, spinning to the end zone. Touchdown, Ohio State, as they reclaim the lead. Third touchdown for Stroud in the half, covered 37 yards. Playoff at that point, but he was a key guy in keeping the energy high. Bennett pulls the ball down and delivers into traffic. Tried to find McConkey, broken up and almost picked off by Cameron Brown. Well, he wanted to go to his left out to Brock Bowers, but for whatever reason came off of that and quickly came back to the middle. And now Munkin and Smart have seen enough. And third and ten with Ohio State out of timeouts. They'll just take a knee. Kirby out there to have a, a word with his quarterback. That was very nearly a crucial mistake before halftime. As it is, 
a terrific first half. Bulldogs will get the ball to begin the third quarter, but they'll have to come from behind. Ohio State up 28-24. And Ryan Day's team will go to the locker room with the lead. Let's go to Holly. Defending the run, and I knew Ohio State had a pretty decisive advantage with Stroud and Harrison and company and throwing the ball against his secondary. If he has time, he's going to make plays. Dogs. Much more balance on offense. Jackson from the one tries to get the edge, and here is Jackson's going to be knocked down near the 30. Laura, now it's third and six. Three man rush. And it all counts of time, but it's batted down to the line of scrimmage. Getting the big hand up was Tyleek Williams, and it's fourth down. If he can't go, then it's serious pain. It takes a lot to keep Stover out, but they have to do without their tight end. Now Stroud, deep drop, looking downfield, launches for Fleming, who comes back to the football. It was underthrown, but he collects it at the 45 in front of Ringo. Three receivers stacked to the right. Stroud looking to launch again, and it's Abuka again inside the 20. Another accurate downfield throw by the quarterback. Your, your, your average dome. Second half, you start to get tired up front. On third and two, play action flips wide open. Abuka, touchdown Ohio State! What a start to the third quarter for the Buckeyes. Get the three and out stop, and they take it 70 in six plays. Steps up against the four-man rush, pumps again, and it's incomplete. He was pressured heavy by Tui Molowal, and the Buckeyes defense jumping around. They get off the field again. So is this a well, ball clearly blown well, dead? It was a scrum after the play. Chambers has got the football claiming that it was a fumble on an incompletion. Lee, yeah. it's fourth down. Now that was the signal initially, but the players couldn't hear the whistle. Right, right. Steen with his 8C completions, Kirk, when the receiver is either open or wide open, which is more than five yards for the defender right. and the receiver gap. That, that's unusual for Georgia's coverage. Backside pressure, they've got him. And that was Bullard coming on the blitz. Third sack. Bennett, drop behind the line. They gave a simulated pressure look, only rush four, and he hesitated, couldn't find anybody open. Nine there, Zach Harrison gets pressure on the opposite side, but that pocket collapses on Bennett. But Lesney, right near his career long from 52 yards, it's within his range. He's missed a long one earlier, made a chip shot, and this to make it a one possession game. Drives this, and no! Slides it wide right this time. So two long field goal misses, and the lead is still 11. With Kate Stover being out, and it's been Rossi. 17 yards is their longest run. Stroud has a man open, and Sabuka knocked out of the 10. Ohio State threatening to bust this open late third quarter. How Harrison at the bottom of the screen. One-on-one. -on -one. Stroud rolling, looking that way, retreating, and he'll just throw it out of the back of the end zone. There was heavy pressure. Actually, a flag comes out. I thought it was going to be way beyond the end line. Harrison worked his way back and actually made a play on the ball and is down on the field. Personal foul, targeting, defense number 22. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. The play is under review. The play took this targeting rule off. It's not rule targeting. Your thoughts? I agree with replay. I do not have targeting. He is defenseless. It was close to contact to the head neck area, but it was more to the shoulder. I did not see his head spin back from it. So the dogs do force a field goal attempt. The first of the night by Noah Ruggles, who's been almost automatic in his Ohio State career. And from 25, he makes the lead 14 now with 31 seconds to go in the third quarter. I think this one still has a lot of a long way to go. Bennett flips it short. McIntosh, stiff arm, escapes, makes a cut. McIntosh, one of the best backs in the country, catching the ball out of the backfield all the way to the 43. 
Georgia really not targeting him a lot. There he is. Down the middle, and Q, it's Bowers, who is open that time, and rumbles out of a 16. Is he going to play a big role, perhaps, in this fourth quarter? But this is the best defense they've played this year. After that motion, Bennett sees a matchup that he likes. He's got time, and he delivers. And there's the catch made by Bowers, but did he get there? Where's the spot? Ransom stopped him. And it's... Yeah, he got stopped. Short. It's short. He got stopped. Buckeyes make a stop. The weapon catches the ball, but Ransom won't let him get the marker. Play has reversed the call, and it's first and goal. The acrobatic Un play by Bowers. <laughs> Game on the line, practically. Look at the left foot. It's elevated. The strength of the left hand. Trying to stay in bounds and trying to get to the line. AT&T... 5G shows it to you. That left foot looked like it went out of bounds, but it goes up into the air right there. Right foot is up, and then eventually he goes out of bounds, Bill. But dogs go backwards from there. Bennett is the holder. Rodlesny's missed a couple long ones, but made two short ones. Not what Georgia was looking for. The lead is still 11. 10-14 to play. And seven. Play clock winding down. Stroud escapes, doesn't do this often, but when he's needed to, he, Ryan says he got the first down. Smile Munden knocked him out. The officials don't agree. They'll spot him short. Wait, it's going to be fourth and a long yard. He, and it's a fake. The ball is snapped, and it's Rossi. They called a timeout. Oh, Georgia timeout, just had a timeout call. The they sniffed it out. They sniffed out the fake, and Smart does a smart thing. Didn't work out. They get the timeout, but the call there. So Mirko on the move. I kick and Jackson will drift back for a fair catch at the 20. Bill, that was really close, right? Where, where some people might be saying, oh, they snapped the ball before the... the, the no question about it, it was close. But if the official grants, if he acknowledges that you're asking for a timeout, whether you're signaling it or saying... I heard it. I heard it before that. Yeah. The so, so you get it. We can shut it down. I don't care if the ball gets snapped I got down. you. Okay, good. Well... Stetson, what do you say? 851. It, it feels like Kirk is gonna have to be the passing game. We're used to seeing Georgia wear people down with the run game in the second half, the physicality, the body shots. You know, in the second half, Georgia's run it 11 times for 13 yards. Ohio State. No one's done that to them. No, no, and Ohio State getting a lead got them out of that their style of play. Play fake. Launch wide open. Arian Smith left alone, and Georgia strikes quickly. 76 yards. Ransom was in coverage, and he slipped. Smith got way behind him. That's exactly right. He's in alone there with the great speed of Smith and loses his balance in his back pedal as he turned to try to run with it. And Smith can go, the fastest receiver on this team. Great job by Stetson Bennett seeing it. He has made a huge impact tonight. Three catches for 129. Bennett delivers, and the two-pointer is good to Lad McConkey. The electric receiver battling through knee pain has been able to do very little tonight. You can see he's limping back to the sidelines, makes the catch. Just showing pressure. He brings some. Stroud spins away. Tucks the ball. C.J. Stroud still running. Toughness from the quarterback position. They're inside the 35. And he creates something on third and eight. Gets the ball up quickly. Catch made by Abuka, who spins for a first down. A big one inside the 25. Stroud will be sacked. It was a slow developing play. It's a huge play for Georgia. Yeah, they, they roll the dice. Glenn Schumann and Kirby Smart down in the red zone. They, they bring the middle pressure there with Dumas Johnson. Oh, again. Yeah, showing pressure. And they bring it. 
Stroud backpedals and flips it incomplete. He tried to work the ball back to Joe Royer, but the tight end was going inside. The ball was coming outside. And here comes the field goal team. Was to build the lead to six to at least force Georgia to score a touchdown to win it. Drives it. Right through Noah Ruggles, whose granddad was a season ticket holder at Ohio State. This is his dream gig. Guy, the guy you believe in now to bring you home to try to win this game. Just six completions for Bennett after halftime. But this is the kind of moment that you live for. And the guy whose career has been a Hollywood script. Another big chapter coming up. Jackson tries to create some field position. And he's going to bring it back out near the 28-yard line. Counting down in Times Square. we got about uh, 15 minutes to go. This game is getting up near 2023. And it has time. Flips it across the middle into traffic. And there's Brock Bowers. First down at the 45. Point quarter. Far left. Bowers lined up on the left side. Bennett steps up, delivers down the middle, Gears Jackson makes the catch at the 15. What a strike by Bennett. In the final minute, Bennett from the pocket, launches to the end zone, caught, touchdown, A.D. Mitchell. A PAT away from the lead. Constantin Bennett's crazy, unlikely, impossibly far-fetched career arc get any wilder. Are you kidding me? What else could happen, right? Scott Howard, Georgia Radio Network with a touchdown call moments ago. From the 10, snap it back to Bennett. He looks in the end zone, throws it for the back corner. Caught! Caught! Touchdown! Touchdown! Touchdown, A.D. Mitchell! Back left corner! Touchdown! The dogs have tied it! And the PAT put him ahead. Now Bennett can just look up at the giant screen overhead. It's two timeouts. Long throw and a catch by Fleming. Moves out across the 40. Stroud. Flushed again, he's got a lot of space, right up the middle, C.J. Stroud, down into field goal range at the 30. Never in his life has he had a game like this, winning with his legs and his arm. And we talked about trying to get it around the 35 to have a chance, you know, for Ohio State fans, since having visions of Cardale Jones scrambling like that against Alabama, right down the middle of the field. Through the hands. Pressure again, Stroud spinning away. Cannot take a sack here. Heaves it out of bounds. That sack would have pulled him way out of field goal range. So with eight seconds to go, here comes Noah Ruggles. Living his dream. Kick it for Ohio State. From 50 for the win and a spot in the national championship game. It's on the way. No good. He hooked it. He's going to survive. At the stroke of midnight, the first few seconds of 2023, not quite enough. The Dogs defense made it a long-range field goal, and Stetson Bennett will have engineered what is the game-winning drive in the fourth quarter. See the emotion on Stetson Bennett and his face, overwhelmed. Three seconds to go, and, and that'll be it. But this, this champion was tested. TCU deserves all the credit for finding a way to win the game, especially Bennett down by six, leads his team down in fitting championship fashion. The boy, Ohio State man, deserves a ton of credit, especially that guy right there, number seven, C.J. Stroud. He left his heart out on his field, overcame a lot, made a lot of plays with his arm, made a lot of plays with his leg, lost his guy, Marvin Harrison, lost Cade Stover. Ohio State just kind of kept battling 
and they come up a bit short. Like I said, it's all about Georgia congratulating them and advancing to that national title. Both teams played great tonight. Fourth quarter was the difference. That's what Georgia works for. It's what they train for. It's what they build their culture around. And the dogs dig deep in their backyard and earn the right to defend their national championship in L.A. And Stetson Bennett and C.J. Stroud, massive show of respect. Two guys who played brilliantly tonight. And Stroud's Ohio State career would come to an end. And Bennett, one more game to go. You got that ball with 2.36 left to play in this game. What went through your mind when you started to do that drive, how you had to win this game down by six? It's in our hands now, you know. And then when we scored, I was scared to death because they played a hell of a game on offense. I was like, damn, we scored too quick. And then our dude stepped up. What a game. What a game. You know, I don't, a little bit biased. I, I might be better in 17 Rose Bowl. I don't know, but good Lord. Wow. You got emotional with just a few seconds left in this game. How did you do it again, Stetson, back to back to the national championship? I have no, I, uh, wow. You know, that, they're a freaking unbelievable team, dude. Wow. And we fall, and we fall, and they beat us, it seemed like, the whole game. And then we came back when we needed to make a play. We had Karras, and then AD came back. Uh, unbelievable. AD has been out. He's been injured in and out of the lineup. How did you trust him in that moment with the biggest touchdown of your life? Uh, just because he was out, it doesn't change who he was. You know, we had to get back on the same page. But I knew at the top of that route, there's not many people who can stay with you quickness-wise. We see you next week at the national championship. God. If you would have told me that when we were down, whatever we were down in the fourth, I would have been like, you are crazy. Yeah, well, we'll see you there. Thank you. Problem being dead wrong when it comes to picking the national championship team. And I tell you what, I love Georgia. I think Georgia is the best team on the field. I just believe that TCU is a team of destiny. They're going to find a way to pull it off tonight. So I'm going Horn Frogs in a close one. A lot to do with Ohio State a week ago and how daggum good they are. I think this defense will play a lot better and make it really hard for TCU, Pat, to move the football. You got Georgia? I got Georgia. Brock Bowers, best player on the field. The defense full of dogs. Give it to Georgia Bulldogs go back to back first time since this man and his Alabama squad. I love the Bulldogs tonight barking all over the place, coach. Me, 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 big game. Yep. Give me that. Oh, 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 okay. Oh, oh, wait, wait, oh. wait. It's not on you. No. Special Teams Player of the Year will kick it away from right to left, and we are underway in the national championship. Davis will catch it up high around the shoulder pad. Get to the second level. That was a six-yard gain. Now here is Bennett going to fake it, and all the way into the end zone. He faked it to Dejon Edwards, who rolled to the right. Some of the defenders went with him, and Bennett has clear sailing. And they get it to one of the receivers. The ball comes out. He's stripped on the far side. Pile for the football. Georgia's got the ball. Con or for uh, Podlesny kicking to our left, and the field goal is up and good. Front line. Beals up as a linebacker. He's not going to come as Duggan will throw a deep ball. Wide open far sideline is caught by Davis. Bullard passes him, trying to tackle him. Davis still on his feet, way down other end of the field by the Frogs. Snap it back to Duggan. He's going to run it in easily, untouched. Sprints in, standing up around the left tackle. Touchdown, TCU. Sign. Dejon Edwards in the backfield. Play fake. Stett sets up to throw. Pressure coming on. Wide open. McConkey reaches up high. Touchdown. Touchdown, McConkey. Nobody near him. Boy, just an out and up there by McConkey. And not a horn frog in sight. Come down from our safety position to make the play. Duggan with the ball. Pressure from the edges. Oh, my gosh. Drilled. 
by Michael Williams. Powers as the lead blocker in that split backfield. Bennett's going to take it and stroll into the end zone. Touchdown. Student body left. Snap into my athletic quarterback. Get a couple of lead blockers out. TCU acts like they've never seen that play before in their life. And back in the shotgun with one back. Snap it back. Defender just flies over a blocker, and then he throws it downfield. It's intercepted by Christopher Smith. Over the shoulder interception. No, it's Bullard. Bullard intercepted the football for the dogs. It's Bowers. Bennett back in the shotgun. Handoff. Milton lowers the shoulder. Drives into the end zone. Touchdown, dogs. For just too easy right there. Just off tackle. Georgia secondary fantastic there. Let's see if they do it again. Duggan going to go down. Yeah, it was pretty good that time. So was the line play. His home state teams. Snap it back on third and a mile. Duggan from the two will throw it all the way across the field. It's picked up by Bullardy. Bullard got it again. The dogs. 32 seconds to go. Bennett to throw. Right angle. One-on-one coverage. And caught, I think. Yeah, touchdown, Mitchell. He's still fighting the guy. TCU ended up with the ball when they came out of the pile, but the officials say touchdown. Get it opened up again. Play fake Milton. Bennett going to roll right, throw a short dump pass ahead to Brock Bowers. Breaks away from an arm tackle in TCU territory. Still going down the near sideline. Two tight ends that side. Bennett takes the snap in the shotgun, throws for the corner. Brock Bowers one-on-one. Caught. Touchdown. He ate him alive. Falls down into the end zone. Six more for Georgia. What a game Brock Bowers is having. Snap it back. Duggan, quarterback draw, pays the price. He stumbled, and Bear eats him alive. Bear Alexander with the tackle. We're on the uh, TCU 14-yard line. Bennett to throw, lobs it to the right corner. There's McConkie. He got on his donkey and made a sliding catch in the right corner. Touchdown. He continues to stack recruiting passes on top of each other. They don't use the portal. They don't have to. It's a Stetson Bennett curtain call here. Here we go. Bennett. Caps a career that began with no scholarship offer at Georgia. He'll leave with a legacy unlike anybody else at this school. Two-time national championship quarterback. No doubt most outstanding player in his fourth playoff game. Not even he could have dreamt this. We'll try to go for a field goal here. Beck will throw for the first down, and he's got it. A quick slant from the outside. Teen, we stay in the shotgun on first down. Hand it off to Robinson. He moves down the line of scrimmage looking for a hole. He found one. He's going to go into the end zone. No, they're going to say he's down just outside, inside the one. Get back on the line and go quickly. Hand it off to Robinson straight ahead. Duggan takes the snap. Three receivers to his left. Blitz! Sack! Down at the... 19-yard line. The tight end out at a wideout on this near side will run it with Robinson, who scored a few moments ago. Shakes and bakes at the 20, at the 15, at the 10, to the 5. Pylon touchdown, left corner. And it's my honor to present the National Championship Trophy once again to Coach Kirby Smart and the Georgia Bulldogs. Kirby, what a spectacular performance. You talked about aggression. You talked about leaving no doubt. Now that you've accomplished back-to-back championships, how do you describe the legacy that this team leaves? This Bulldog Nation leaves a legacy for coming all the way out to Cali and representing our home university and our state. These kids have been unbelievable all year. People have doubted them since the start of the year, and the staff, the organization, everybody's done a tremendous job. When you think about what it took to keep the focus going and the difficulty, which you know better than anyone else, how difficult it is to repeat, what, in, what quality did this team show that allowed them to do that? A lot of grit, uh, a lot of toughness. But the word we use around our place is connection. Every one of our guys know we stay connected. We're hard to beat. We're hard to beat tonight. That was as good a championship performance as we've seen in any sport in a long time and perhaps ever. Kirby, congratulations. 
And I guess the way things are going the last couple of years, we'll see you in Houston next year. <laughs>